podcasting and streaming around the globe. I yeah. like to say I that. I do. That, that's yeah. good. It, it's kind of like that disastrous ABC Sports Open back in the 60s okay. where the guy tumbles off the big ski. You do ski. the tumbling down the ski. Yeah, you do that. And I'll be taking pictures of it. Okay. This is the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show brought to you by Meekum Auctions Houston at NRG Center April 4th through the 6th. That's just next week. Yeah. Just ahead, Bay Area VW Club President Dave Saucier and a big bug bash. We're going to talk about that. Jeff has a feature on tires for your analysis and tar- tire buying pleasure. That's all just ahead on the NML Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's a beautiful day here in the Houston, Texas Gorgeous. area. Gorgeous um, day. Yeah, it's a beautiful morning. The sun's out. Uh, spring is in the air. Actually, it's almost summer is in the air. Yeah. We go from freezing cold, rainy, nasty weather to this. It's beautiful. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, and none of us are wearing sweaters. Not yet. Yeah. Maybe later on. Yep. You know, because we get yeah. chilled at our age. <laughs> Well, speak I'm not for going yourself. There. I'm, I'm, yeah. All right. Dave Saucier is the president of the Bay Area VW Club. And uh, Dave, good morning to you, sir. Good morning to y'all. How are y'all? Well, we're very well, thank you. And uh, it's good to have you with us. Do you live in the Bay Area? Uh, yes, sir. L- over here in Laporte, Texas. You're in Laporte? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Well, uh, for those that are watching, streaming around the globe. And don't have a, nap, a map in front of them. No, they don't. Uh, the Bay Area here in Houston is Galveston Bay. Yes, not not San Francisco Bay. Mm-hmm. So right. I just wanted to clarify or Tampa that. Tampa Bay or, yeah, or any of those Green other Bay. bay. Uh-huh. Any of those other bays. Well, Dave, uh, tell me about the Bay Area VW Club. Certainly. Uh, it was uh, formally founded in 1988, and our very first meeting uh, was at, and I don't know if you all might remember this, but the old Les Marks Chevrolet dealership uh, meeting room off 146 and Spencer Highway, which is no longer in existence. Yes, I I remember exactly Mm -hmm. where that was uh, because I was working at Richardson Chevrolet in Houston, and we we did a, uh, what it called a dealer exchange, and uh, I had to drive the car that we exchanged for their car over there at Last Marks. And back then, I think this was about 1969, 1970, back then our freeway system wasn't quite what it is today. And it, took, <laughs> it took several hours to complete that task. But yes, at any rate, uh, yes, I remember it very well. And um, so where do you got? Do you guys have meetings? Do you do you, do you do things like, oh, let's get the uh, the – the secretary to talk about the minutes of the meeting. Oh boy. Please yes, tell sir. me. You do that? Yes, sir, we do. We um, Now, you learned that in high school, Dave, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I don't I don't go by that, but that's okay. If, if you guys if you guys want to talk about the last meeting, then that's fine. But um, so how many members uh, of the VW club down there? We have around 20 to 25 members uh, that, that, that do uh, participate um, every month. Uh, we help, we'll hold the meetings every month, um, talk about past, uh, prop, not problems, but issues. We talk about upcoming events, uh, what we're going to participate in, uh, preparations for shows and whatnot. Uh, it may not seem like a lot, but it is. Uh, and we only have a short you know, hour and a half to uh, complete our, our, our meetings every month. And, and that doesn't include what goes on in the background where we're not having our meetings. Uh, a lot of stuff goes on to make events happen, such as beer drinking. Bug bash. Yeah. So you got 20 to 25 folks that are in, in this club. What kind of issues do you have? I mean, there can't be uh, anything drastic. Uh, they no, have, they no, have no, insecticide no. issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No. Uh, what we're going to participate in, how much money are we going to spend on certain items that we're going to uh, buy for the club? Or to hand out per se, uh, it's that sort of thing. It's no, we're we're. Uh, I like to say that we're a. Uh, I, I don't want to sound uh, too 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 bad, but we're like a. We're just a, a gr- of individuals with Volkswagen problems. That's all. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know Volkswagens had any problems. Yeah, I was going to say. But well, sir, they're 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 more. Uh, <laughs> they're 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 still they're kind of like an analog and digital world right now. That's what they are. 
um, you still have points to set. You still have spark plugs to gap. It's 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 not without its problems, but that's the whole point in driving the car. You're you're one with the car. It's it's you are operating a vehicle uh, of, of past technologies, basically. Well, we like that because we're kind of living in the past right here mm-hmm. on the in-wheel time yeah. of our talk show. Exactly. Too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so y- you had told me earlier that you have a 67 bug, and you told me the reason that you chose the 67 uh, to get into. Why don't you tell everybody what you told me about the 67? Certainly. The uh, the 67 was the... Uh, not the pinnacle year, but it's it's it is a sought after year because of the, the changes that were incorporated into the vehicle. Uh, first year, 12 volt. Uh, it was still relying on the classic body lines uh, with uh, with modern, I guess you'd say, ni- modern 1967 changes. Um, it is a uh, I guess a, a crux between the two uh, years, the late models and the, and the uh, the early models. Um, well, and you is, also yeah you also told me that uh, there was. The, the six volt system was before sixty seven, and they went to a twelve volt system in sixty seven. Absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely correct. A lot of people had problems with the the, the headlights dimming. They turn on their windshield wipers in the rain, and the headlights would dim. <laughs> uh, not the most ideal. Yeah, hmm. they, exactly. Uh, at, were the engines the same back then? No, sir. The, uh, the, the, the 67 was the first year and the only, um, I guess you could say, not the only year, but the 1500 to 1.5 liter. Um, very reliable in stock form. Uh, if, and if you're cutting 30 miles a gallon or more, you're, you're doing pretty good. So why Volkswagens? Why not another brand or another species of car, so to speak? I blame my parents for this. <laughs> um when Dad got out of the Navy, uh, they had a 1967, Vol- uh, 1966 Volkswagen, and uh, of course, as being a kid, young kid at one, two years old, um, pictures were taken with me behind the wheel in the cubby hole behind the rear seat, oh. <laughs> and uh, that basically lit the fire. And ever since then, I've been hooked. Um, either you you understand them, or you don't. Well, you know, I, I will tell you this: I I didn't have one, but I had I had the uh, the bug beater. I had the uh, Chevrolet Corvair, so <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, yes. and, and, and had many races with uh, a bunch of uh, friends of mine that that had a bug, and one in particular that was part of our little clique uh, of car guys that. Uh, one of the guys had a 55 uh, Chevrolet that uh, he had souped up the engine in, and it was it was a loud beast, but it, uh, non-competitive, clearly, uh, with the Volkswagen and, and the Corvair. But I'll tell you what, uh, we had a great time, and as you mentioned earlier, that it, it was fun because we didn't have any electronics, per se, other than no, the sir. distributor and the battery. That was about yeah. the extent yeah. of, of the electronics, and it was easy to work on. And um, tell me, I want to know more about your buggy. You say it's all stock? Yes, sir. A yes, stock sir. Bug. So have you, have you kind of shed the idea that you're not going to soup it up? You're not going to put on, you know, some aftermarket air cleaner yeah, how, or exhaust how, system or how something? How do you soup it up? I mean, what do you do to get the horsepower, the add-ons? I, the, the, the number one add-on item for anybody with an air-cooled Volkswagen is the exhaust, a mm-hmm. better flowing exhaust. Uh, that would be the number one um, starter. Uh, but I prefer mine the way it is as it comes from the factory. Uh, it's more reliable. Uh, parts are more readily accessible uh, in, in stock form. And people appreciate it a lot more. Um, just recently, um, a group of us enthusiasts <coughs> traveled Texas US 67 from Texarkana all the way to Presidio on the, on the on the Mexico border. Wow! And I drove almost 2,000 miles trouble free because of that. Uh, yes, we had other people in buses that had problems overheating. I had none. I'll be done. And 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 that's a testament to keeping it in stock form. Yeah, I will tell you. Uh, speaking of non-stock form, I'll never forget going to the drag strip down there. Not too far from you, Houston International Raceway. And yes, sir. It was a quarter-mile track. Are you familiar with that? Anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I went down that track a time or two. Yeah. And well, I'll never forget going there and uh, seeing a, a Volkswagen uh, run a 10-second quarter mile. <laughs> the guy had a huge, uh, you know, uh, a trumpet exhaust one 
thing off the back end of that thing. Yeah, yeah, that stinger. And I mean that's, that's that correct. I have never in my entire life seen a Volkswagen go as fast as that one was. It was shocking. Mm-mm. I thought, how cool is that? And I uh, bet I, it sounded like an angry swarm of bees. That's yeah. exactly what it sounded like. Bumblebee. And I'll tell you what, I mean, he blew the doors off of his competitor on the other lane over there. And I will never forget <laughs> that. And it, it was uh, it was quite breathtaking because I had never seen anything like that before. But I do know that it had... Now, let me put it this way. The stock block in it, but he had souped it up as to such a, a method that I don't know what all he put back there, but it was all covered up. You couldn't see it, but it was a beast of a motor that went down the track screaming, as you can imagine. So I know that there's power to be had by doing some modifications yes, to the sir. engine. Yeah. So, so yes, sir. Dave, I want, to, I want to get involved in a bug bash i want to go out and get me a volkswagen how do where do i go what's the best place i can go look for a a, a volkswagen and get started with it do you go to hemmings do you go to a used car lot how hemmings, do you do that hemmings is good uh facebook marketplace um is is a decent place to go um i don't think that they still make the car trader magazines anymore um word of mouth is good um or knowing just, somebody you know, in the volkswagen club go. to yeah, help yeah. you yes sir i i i get tasked a lot about being asked, hey, I'm interested in Volkswagen. Where can I find one? And generally, I know where one is 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 for sale. It would be a thing, a bus, uh, a Carmen Ghia. Uh, oh, we get we get asked that a lot, and 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 a lot of people will come to our Facebook website page and ask if they can post up a car for sale. And there's a few on there, uh, but the biggest caveat I tell everybody if they're going to buy one is a Volkswagen. Be sure to check the floor pans. Make sure they're not rusted out. That is the number one killer. Because mm-hmm. um, replacing floor, pl- floor pans is not an easy task. Yeah. It can be done, but it's not easy. You got to know what you're doing. I got a friend of mine that uh, owns and runs uh, Pro-Am Auto Accessories, and he's got a VW Bug convertible mm-hmm. that's uh, not quite complete, but uh, the body and the, all of the stuff, the, the metal work on the on the body is all complete. It looks really good. I Very think nice. It, I think it needs a, a, an engine, and I think that it needs an interior and a top. But, but not uh, much of it. I mean, it's all there. It's just got to be tweaked. Yeah. So uh, at any rate, if you know somebody, there you go. There's a, there's a tip for you. Tell us so a, yeah. I want to know, I was just going to say, I want to know about the Bay Area uh, 34th Annual monumental bug bash yes sir uh the very first one was held in may of 1990 at the mexican encampment at the san jacinto monument and um as we progressed through the years our relations were good uh, we donated thousands back to the park um when that park became a state historical site that came with a, a, a new set of rules and policies and they asked us to uh, find another show site so we, we sourced up the El Jardin Beach Park in Pasadena, Texas, um, which is an ideal site on the beach uh, and nooked into a little uh, neighborhood that's it's basically a hidden gem. And we hold it every year in May. Uh, people, it's free to spectators to come out. We have vendors, swap meters. Um, if you wanted to show your Volkswagen, it's, it's still relatively cheap to do. We give out the, the best of awards and the people's choice. And with what money that we do generate, we give back uh, to the neighborhood uh, by means of doing uh, adopting basically five families in the area, buying them gifts for the kids and also uh, meals for the day. And, and that's what we've been doing for the long, long time. Now, is it an open car show or is it just for bugs? Strictly Volkswagens, be it either air-cooled or water-cooled. Okay, wow. and uh, I, so I could bring my thing. Yes, par- sir. Pardon the pun. <laughs> but, or I, I could I could bring my uh, Tiguan. Yes, sir. You could. Okay, just checking. I did. Yes, need, sir. Uh, but it's got to be a VW. Well, that's that, that's yes, cool. How, how many Twinkies you got to eat to win the contest? Because I see there's a Twinkie you, eating contest. We. <laughs> We we limit that to the kids, oh, and they yeah. have to eat a uh, 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 if they if they finish a whole box within two and a half minutes, they are the the, the clear winners. Uh, but the deal is, you have to eat as many as you can in two and a half minutes. No peeps. And those kids win a twenty five dollar gift card. And I always encourage the kids to have their mom or dad stop at the local corner store and buy more uh, soda or sweets to go home in. There you go. 
But no, get them all, get them all right jacked up, up on sugar. Exactly. But no peeps. None of the yellow peeps or pink peeps. No, none of that. <laughs> okay. Even though it's Easter weekend. It is. You could probably get them uh, b- bargain uh, basement style yeah, the next stale week. Ones. The yeah. stale ones the next week. Day old peeps. Well, it sounds like a ton of fun. So do you have a website where we can send people if they're interested in going and visiting the 34th Annual Monumental Bug Bash? Yes, sir. We uh, are are we are limited to the the, the Facebook uh, page, the Bay Area VW Club. Okay. It is on Facebook. It is open to uh, uh, anybody that wants to join. Um, we welcome everybody that would like to, uh, to come see the show. Uh, it is a, a a no no drama show. We 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 enjoy having everybody out there, and I truly enjoy visiting with old friends that come back. To the show that travel for miles out of town. Um, well, I guess I do love seeing the Volkswagens. I love visiting with people that I'm only living to seeing once or twice a year and catching up. Hmm. Uh, that's what I truly enjoy. I want to know, do you have any souped up Volkswagen bugs down there at this show? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, we do. <laughs> he says it with a sigh. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, sir, we do. We have a, a, a quite a number of individuals that have uh, the high compression or the turbo or the superchargers. We do have those individuals. And uh, you get to know them. They are a hoot uh, to, uh, to, to befriend with. They are something else. No doubt. Big ideas. <laughs> yeah, big ideas. I love the car. Dave Saucier, it's great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you for having me. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. you. Good luck, and uh, we hope to hear from you again. Let us know how it goes. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Dave. How fun. Yeah. All right. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. And a new daily podcast is available from your favorite podcast provider. Also, we also video stream our three-hour weekly live show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk in storefront includes an 8,000 square foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to book now at Meekum.com. Welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. All right. Got a feature story Jeff's going to get to in just a second here. Tire tutelage. Mm-hmm. Okay. But in yeah. the meantime, 
I've got a story that I wanted to start off with. Go for it. Electric vehicle owners are noticing vehicle tires wearing faster than those on gasoline-powered vehicles. Yep. And we touched on this we a few did. weeks back. We did. That's according to J.D. Power 2024 U.S. Original Equipment Tire Customer Satisfaction Study. That's a long title for a study. Findings from the study highlight EV owners having less satisfaction with the durability of their tires, expecting them to wear similar to gasoline-powered vehicle tires. Mm -hmm. However, EV tires naturally wear quicker because of greater vehicle weight and higher torque. This gap in satisfaction creates an opportunity for tire manufacturers and automakers to ensure EV owners are properly educated, according to Ashley Egger, uh, the senior director of benchmarking and alternative mobility at JD Power. He says, because of the inherent conflicting or conflict of maximizing vehicle range and optimizing tire wear for EVs, tire manufacturers and automakers need to work together to overcome the challenge without completely sacrificing the performance in other areas, especially as the EV market continues to increase. EV tires also are an opportunity for dealer service departments. With fewer moving parts, EV service visits might mostly entail tire rotation and replacement and new wiper blades. In 2023, CDK Global White Paper, EV Service Today and Tomorrow, 18% of dealership leaders polled said tire maintenance would be the most common service concern for EV owners. Tied for second with technical issues with the vehicle display system. 38% of those surveyed said they believed software issues would be the top concern. But Hmm. U.S. Original Equipment Tire Customer Satisfaction Study assesses tire owner satisfaction in four areas. Tire ride, tire wear, tire traction, handling, and tire appearance. So... The EV tire situation is becoming an education for those people yep. that have no clue what they're getting themselves into the by vehicle, buying an EV. It's heavier. So, so what are tires, EV tires made out of? Rubber. Which comes from? Well, in our case, oil for the most part. Exactly. Yeah. But we're going to put the oil world out of business. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, but that's the point, the the point of that story is the vehicles are heavier. Absolutely. It's the construction of the tire. You need better, stiffer, firmer sidewalls. Uh, you know, the cross section of the tire doesn't matter, but that's tread, and that's part of the torque where you get that grip on the road because you're between the the seat of your pants and that road is a patch of tire. That's it. Are, are we seg- segueing into the next segment? We can. You want to do that? <laughs> this is this is your yeah. segment. Well, let's do that. There you go, Michael. <laughs> How about that? So, anyways, what what do the tires mean? I mean, what do, what do the numbers mean on the tires? Well, we're going to tell you. In a typical tire, you've got all these numbers on the side of the tire. You can see a picture of that if you're watching it on your, your big flat screen. Um, generally, you'll have a, a, a letter in front of the numbers, meaning like a P for pa- passenger or an ST for special tire, LT for truck, light truck. But in this case, you're looking at it, and, and you've got a 195-65 R15. What that means is that the 195 is the section width of the tire. It's actually the tread patch. It's where all the little grooves and things are on the tire from side to side, if you're looking at it face first. So that is is the... 205, well, the 195 in this case in millimeters. So it's 195 in millimeters. The the 65 in this case is called the aspect ratio, and it's a two-digit number, and that is actually a percentage of the sidewall, the height of the sidewall from the rim to the top of that tread. So that is the aspect. The R indicates what it is. It's a radial tire. B is for bias, D is for directional or, or digital directional tires. And then, of course, in this case, the 15 is the rim size. So that is the aspect ratio of the tire. In this case, it's a 195-65 radial tire, 15-inch rim. If you go further than that, you're going to see a load index of 91. 91 is actually what the pounds per square inch that tire can hold at its normal inflation rate. So the the maximum inflation rate of a tire is probably around 44 to 45 pounds maximum, and you don't want to do that. That's just drastically inflated. So what you would do is you would take the, uh, in this case, it is a 91, and if you take that 91 times 15, which is the rim size, you will get the pounds per square inch of that tire and what it will hold so far as weight. 
And in this case, you're looking at uh, right around 1,300 pounds at a 36 PSI pressure, which is the normal tire pressure for any tire. Generally, it's between 32 and 38, but in this case, we're just going to take an average of 36. You also have an H, which is the speed rating indicator. The H is, is produced by the Department of Transportation on what that tread will or that tire tread How will they take. can spit it up. Right, right. So there is a guide. You can look at guides, and the tire shops have those. And, and in this case, the uh, H, in this case, the tire maximum speed rating is 130 miles an hour. And this goes from a low S, <clears throat> excuse me, a Q, which is at 100, all the way up to a Z, which is more than 149 miles per hour. And I think, Don, you probably have a W or a Y on your Corvette tires, which are around... Uh, 168 to 186 so far as the speed rating of that tire. The car won't go that fast. Well, but, but the whatever. tire will. But the tire will. Yeah. So it's made that way. On that chart, so Q, almost all tires then should be able to cover up to 100 miles an hour. Right. I mean, not all cars will do that. Well, they got governors on them. You're know, not going to have a 22-inch tire rated at a Q. It's going to be a small tire. It's going to be a 14 or 15-inch tire. So the lower the number, the smaller the, the diameter of the tire. Okay. Okay. Go. So the so higher if you the go number, to you go to 20s. You go to 20s, you're probably looking at a, a V or a W or a Y, depending on the tire and what you want out of the tire. Right. You can get sticky tires, you can get non-sticky tires and things of that nature. Your imports, or what they call UHP, ultra-high performance tires, are generally a stickier compound. They're made for road grip. Uh, you see them on a lot of imports. Uh, yeah. The Japanese domestic vehicles have those as well, the Kumos, the Yokohamas, and things of that nature. So then, moving on to that, uh, you'll see in this, you've got a 2119 little... Uh, grouping there that is actually the birth date of the tire and in this case if you're looking at the screen that's a 2119 this tire was built the 21st week of 2019 so the first two digits of the week the second two digits of the year it was manufactured so if you're looking at a tire on a shelf somewhere maybe you're at a tire store or maybe one of the big box stores and you see well we're in the year 2024 if you see a, a tire that is 3523 tire was built in the 35th week of 2023. I don't like to buy tires more than a year old if it's a shelf date. That's just me. You know, some people can go longer. Now, manufacturers say they can go up to five years. Uh, you can. I mean, if that's what they're recommending and if they're going to take the liability for that, that's fine. I don't buy tires unless if they're under, a, they have to be under a year old for me to buy them. Now, if they're on the shelf and they're going to give you a deal on that, yeah, the tire is still good. There's no problem with that now if the tire is on your vehicle and it's five or six or ten years old remove it because they do wear out the tire does degrade in the rubber manufacturing part of it uh your nylons and your rayons and things all hold up but the actual rubber part of it um will will degrade on that so there you go check it out uh, you got summer coming you got spring coming you got a lot of road trips look into your tires make sure they're they're uh, good and, and why did, solid. So why you. did and why did I get the uh, look look good tires off of my car because they uh, the date on them aged. Yeah, they're aged out. Was and it ten years? Uh, well, they say ten. Some manufacturers go ten. Some say eight. Uh, I believe being in the tire business for the years that I was involved in it, I wouldn't go past five five to six years. Now, granted, depending on the car, if it's just a little grocery getter, you're going to use it on the weekends, just go back and forth to the soccer field or whatever. You could probably get away with that. If you're taking a long trip, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, you're going on the Hot Rod Tour of Texas. We're all going on that. I, If my tires were a little older, I would, you got time to think about getting some new tires. Well, I don't. Well, I'm just saying. I just bought them two you years ago. Them. You got run flash. No, you got the bad boys of the group. And, and my placard on my door says 30 PSI. 30 PSI. Okay. Well, then you're in that yeah. range. Just don't put 44 in it. No. <laughs> now, my dad, when we took his keys away from him, he, his tires were really old, but we didn't change them because he, he, he couldn't drive it more than three or four miles. And that only happened a couple of times a week. Yeah. So it's to your point. Yeah. If it was going any further than that, we'd have had to do something different. Right. I want to tell everybody that today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla restaurants in Houston, Beaumont, and College Station. Also, Gulf Coast Auto Shield and Pro-Am Auto Accessories. We continue our show right after this quick break. 
The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. around the globe it's the end wheel time car talk show just ahead we got hemming sold cars round right. we always have a fun time with that jeff has this week's cruise in calendar i'll have the stories making automotive news today's show is sponsored by mecham auctions houston at nrg center april 4th through the 6th that's coming up this week friends mm-hmm. howdy along with mike out of this world more mars we need more jeff zekin Chief Engineer David Ainsley is at right. home in bed sleeping. There you go. He'll be with us here in a couple of weeks. You I'm go, Don David. Armstrong. Glad that you could join us today. Uh, so we're going to get to the Hemmings Soul Car Roundup. But I got a feature. You know, uh, Mr. Mars and I, uh, back in the day when the auto manufacturers were paying to fly us around and show us their different wares, uh, we got a chance to go up to Auburn Hills. And at the time, it was the Chrysler proving grounds Mm -hmm. and they always showcased lots of different vehicles that they were touting at the time Mm -hmm. that's where i got to see and hear the actual original turbine car they pulled it out and said here you go and it just sat there nice and quiet like and a lot of heat coming off the back end of it as you can imagine uh, one of the other things that they always did was they always had lots of Jeeps and the yes. concept vehicles. Well, Jeep designers and engineers have concocted another round of innovative concepts for the 58th annual Easter Jeep Safari Off-Roading Summit in right. Moab, Utah. The four concepts will test their capabilities on the rugged terrain at the event that is taking place this weekend, which is one of the largest off-road gatherings in the world and hosted by Moab's Red Rock Four-Wheelers Club. Uh, Some of the Jeeps include the Lowdown. The Lowdown Wrangler concept pays homage to the Lower 40 concept from 15 years ago that included the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 and 40 inch mud terrain tires. It's uh, uh, quite the looker. These are all concepts. They're not for sale. Mm. But people steal the ideas from these concepts from the factory and put them on their own. That would look really cool. There's yeah, humongous tires on it. How about the Willis Dispatcher? All right. Willis Dispatcher concept based on the Wrangler 4xE plug in hybrid that I understand they're no longer going to make takes inspiration from post World War II civilian Jeeps. It features 36 inch tires wrapped around vintage style alloy cream steelies. An old school style <laughs> winch with modern technology adorns the front bumper. The winch looks like a lawnmower motor that's strapped to a Jeep, one of the spokespersons said. 
The carpet was removed because early Jeeps didn't have that amenity. That's right. For a Jeep Performance Parts vinyl floor cover instead. How about the Gladiator Rubicon High Top? All right. Gladiator Rubicon High Top Concept Sports retro-inspired ginger snap paint. <laughs> it's loaded with parts such as concept flat fender flares, say that fast, at all four corners to give drivers ample off-road ride clearance. The seats are retrimmed with custom quilted and perforated tan and black Alea leather, whatever that is, and have embossed Jeep Performance Parts logos on the headrests, a sun bonnet provides overhead protection in that one. What would you describe, since the folks can't see it, describe the ginger snap color? What, what it's, color would you call uh, it's that? It's kind of like a, a honey-infused yellow. Kind of a dull what? yellow. I don't know. Kind of a gold. Okay. It's kind of a dark a yellow. soft gold? Yeah, soft gold. Uh, vacationeer. A vacationeer concept based on the Grand Wagoneer provides comfort while braving the elements. It features a red tail Overland s- Skyloft on the roof. I drive it. <laughs> that serves as a climate controlled sleeping space for two people. It's kind of a wedge looking odd thing for two people. Look it up, Google it. I'd drive it with that configuration. I would Stock drive it around. Second with that. and third row seats were removed to accommodate the Skyloft. I would drive the it. The Vacationeer is accept, uh, accented with wood grain graphics on the side in a callback to Wagoneers of yesteryear. That I wouldn't have anybody riding with me, but I would drive No, we, we would be running from you is what we'd do. I don't know that guy. But anyway, those are some of the things that are going on at Moab and the Jeep Safari this I've, weekend. I've got a customer that uh, is out on a Jeep run this week. I'm thinking that's where he's at. Probably. Uh, I will talk to him uh, Tuesday of next week, and I'm going to ask him because I was kind of communicating with him. I think he takes his son out, and they do that for the week out there. So, uh, And he, that's How what fun. he does. On, on you know, Other people yeah. do other things, yeah. automotive. That's what he does. I love those great big tires. On the little bitty wheels, I like that look, which is just the opposite of you know everybody's cool yeah. look today right. with the little rubber band tires yeah. and those great big wheels. Just the opposite is what I like. Of course, mm-hmm. I've always been kind of odd that way. Yeah. The big gator back tires with the big grip knobs. Yeah, yeah, all the cutouts. Hemmings dot com has a thing called their sold cars roundup, and it gives you an idea of what was sold the prior week. People, you know, put their cars up for sale. Uh, and a bidding kind of process. Mm-hmm. So uh, first up is the 69 Chevy Corvette in bright yellow. All right. And uh, the 69 Corvette still had the steel, chrome steel bumpers front and back on right. it. Okay. And it was uh, the old Mako shark body. Mm-hmm. What do you think that it sold for on Hemmings? 69. A 69. It has side pipes on it. It is a coupe. It's not a convertible. Doesn't say if it's big block? It doesn't. No. Uh, well, the hood does. Well, I take that back. It could be a, a stinger. big block. Not a stinger hood, but it's got uh, an Erased. emblem up on it, and it could very well be a big block. 23. Oh, I was going to go 23. I'll go 23.5. You're close. 26.355. Now, I will tell everybody that... We don't know the condition underneath. I, no. We don't. We don't delve into it that deeply. But uh, I can tell you just that by appearances. Just by appearance in, in, the, in the screenshot that they've got. And you got. can play along at home. A too. 1976 Toyota FJ40. Now this is an old school Jeep looking thing that has a uh, hard top on it that kind of reminds one of the U.S. Postal Service mm-hmm. delivery vehicles. If you're I'm familiar with that. 76 model. What do you think that that thing sold for at FJ40? 17,000. 17. Mr. Mars? Uh, I'm going to go 23. How about $47,250? Oh. It's one of those that I, I'm not into it, yeah. but apparently somebody is, and they paid $47,000 for it. Man. Yeah. Here's a very ugly painted 1973 AMC javelin ooh! remember the javelin yeah but the whole thing is painted purple with purple wheels that's it, in the matador that it's so freaking ugly the matador even, family look at that look at how ugly it's a wrap it looks like a wrap well whatever yeah, but it's, it's purple the we- yeah but the wheels too jeff I yeah mean, i know the wheels that's the old wheels are painted so what do you think that uh, that thing sold for 73 amc javelin eight grand 
No, I, I'll go 16. 16? How about $9,500? Uh, it's in the Matador family. Uh, Kathy and I had, she had a uh, friend she went to school with had a Matador. I was going to say, I am ho- sure hope that she didn't have that. No. Uh, here's one for you, Mars. A 1973 Chevrolet Impala. Blue with a dark blue Landau top. <laughs> That's me, baby. 73? A 73. What do you think that that thing sold for? This is a big honking car with those great big ugly bumpers, chrome bumpers front and back. 73. 11,000. 11,000, Mars? Your guess? And 8,500. $18,900. <laughs> it looks cherry. I don't know. Well, he didn't say that. <laughs> now for now for now for you boys that really are into Jeeps. A 2005 Jeep Wrangler. Now, mind you that this is uh, almost a 20-year-old Jeep Wrangler. It looks clean, looks like it's got some accessories on it. It's a two-door, clearly. Uh, it looks fairly stock, to be honest with you, except for the winch in the front with some, uh, looks like fog lights up there, too. Uh, what do you think that that thing sold for? A 2005 Jeep Wrangler. It looks really clean. Mm, 21. 14. 23. <laughs> 835. Jeff, this one's for you. you All ready? right. It's got to be good. A 1941 Cadillac 62 <laughs> convertible. Priceless. Put a million dollars down on that. Okay. Dude, that thing, uh, this thing is awesome. 40 looking. what? A 41, a 1941 Cadillac 62. It's a two-door, clearly, with a convertible top. It's got a split windshield, so two-piece windshield. Right, right. $32,000. dollars 32 And not a penny more. Mars? Nah, I go 27 Really? How about $54,000? <laughs> but I'm only spending thirty two. dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 32 is all he's giving for it. Go. That's gorgeous. Oh, and it's got the, the camel top? Yes, very Camel nice. colored top. Yeah. I think I would change that out to a black top, but no, that would be leave me. it. Okay. Yeah. How about this one? We we were talking to the bug guy with the bug bash coming mm-hmm. up. Uh, a 1972 Volkswagen Westphalia. Remember those? I saw one of those two days ago. It yeah. was. It looked like a guy. It looked like a a, a deadhead driving it. <laughs> yeah, deadhead. And mm-hmm. he had the ponytail yeah. and all that. It was it was beat up. It had stickers all over it from the Grateful Dead and all that. Well, the Westphalia was a camper style. Yeah, and he, yeah, had, yeah. he had a rack on it. I think he had a Yakima on the top. I would say <laughs> probably eight grand. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm really? going to say 22. Okay. Really? How about 36? Oh, uh, oh. see, see, yeah. That's a real collector. Oh, I'm too. picturing the the hippie driving it so now mars you know i i know that i make fun of uh, you living over there in deep east <laughs> yeah, <Texas. he> does. <laughs> yeah yeah i know that i do that but i think that this would you'd look really cool in this this is for you so you could go and show off your car prowess all right a 1988 lamborghini countach oh, red that's a bad looking car and it looks really cool. How much do you think that a uh, 1988 Lamborghini Countach would sell for? I have to think about that for a second. I know there was a guy in town several years that had one, and, and it ended up costing him, I think he got 8 to 10 over in Huntsville. but 8 to 10 miles per gallon? No, years. <laughs> but 8 to 10 I, years. I, I would say probably <laughs> 75000 Really? I'm going to go twenty one. Twenty-seven thousand three hundred dollars. You got to think of the year the Countach was. They're not in vogue anymore, I guess. So no, and I, I mean you would see some you know half-naked girl uh, splayed out over the front hood with the pictures. Big, big long the, blonde fluffy yeah. hair. So that's, that's what I think of with the camper, the camper one. That's the one yeah. I think of with all yep. that. Yeah, Mm-mm. Chrysler Imperial from nineteen fifty-six. Oh. Huge boat, 56? 32 a 19, feet long. Yeah, 56, a lot of chrome up front. A 1956 Chrysler Imperial. You know, I never thought that they were very good-looking cars. You pay and by they the were foot. trying to, yeah, And they were trying to compete with Cadillac. I don't know whether they did or not, but 56 Chrysler Imperial. And I'm, I don't want to offend anybody that's into those kind of cars uh, because, I mean, there's something to be said for it. This is a clean-looking black 
car, four door sedan. Forty six thousand. Uh, Forty six. Forty six thousand mm-hmm. bars? No twenty three. Twenty. Oh. Twenty thousand two hundred thirty one dollars. Now that would be the car to take on the hot rod Cruise. tour in Texas. Let me see it. What do you got? There you go. Oh now, yeah. Now oh, yeah. this this is a this is one, Jeff. Yeah. I think this has got your name written on it. Now I don't think that they made true woodies in nineteen fifty. I think they were partial woodies. With the wood sides, mm-hmm. okay, oh. uh, and I think that it had the steel backing on it, and it was kind of like a veneer kind of thing mm-hmm. that they put on it. So this is a 1950 Mercury station wagon, two door, with the wood sides. Wow. Okay. Two door. Two door. 1950. It looks rare. I don't believe I've ever seen one. Had white. It looks like it's completely restored. Wide whites, uh, dark blue, uh, painted steel. A lot of chrome. 1950 Mercury. 56,000. There it is right there. Can you see 56,000. 56. See 56? Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to go 40. $72,975. <laughs> I mean, this thing, I, I could see us driving that. We spent a lot of money this week, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys. Well, I thought that you'd appreciate it. It was good. It was. How did you do at home playing? Send us your comments whether you got it or not. Yeah. I know that you don't have the pictures to look at. I get that. But, you know, this Go is... Go to Hemmings. This is, Check them out. Yeah, you, yeah, you can go and find the, the Soul Cars Roundup. Usually every Monday is when they post them. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, Hemmings.com and just go for uh, their auction site that's on there. You can even bid on the cars yourself. Yeah. Because once you drill down, if you click on the car, you can see the actual details. All of the yeah. details of it. They they have, you know, 100 pictures yeah. on there and Well, there's requirements to do that too to put it on there. You do have right. to have certain photos of certain parts of the car before they accept you to put it in there. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. We, we when we talked to them, it was really interesting to see how the, they the, the the extent they go to to make sure that the buyer has as much information as you mm-hmm. can get. That's right. Yeah. All right. Um, why don't we do the cruise in calendar? Okay. You don't want a break? Um, I'm going to wait on the break. I think that uh, next Sunday will be. Well, we do need to take you're a break. We're going to take that as a no. Take a break. <laughs> we're going to take a break. And I'm then, ready. We're, then we're going to do the cruise in calendar. Sure. Next Sunday will be uh, Craig's monthly mm-hmm. Chrome and Coffee. It's so. coming up. Yeah. All right. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. Podcasts on your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our three-hour live weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro Am will lend you a hand. Pro Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713 781 7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good 
by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mika Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. Welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Uh, time now for Jeff's Cruise in Calendar. Okay, this is what we got. It is a holiday weekend. We got Easter tomorrow, so there's a little bit light on the schedule. But I do have some that are going to be very interesting. We've got uh, the American Legion Sam Houston Post 95 in Huntsville, Texas is going on right now. Well, it's actually from 11 to 4, so you can kind of get up there in Huntsville. It's hop on over to join the fun. It's the American Legion uh, Post 95, like I said, and they're at 1919 American Legion Drive in Huntsville, Texas. There is a website. Uh, you can take a photo with the Easter Bunny, Mike, yeah. between noon and 2. And in front of uh, Death Row. Yep. Uh, there's a bunny hop. There's a cake walk. You can win a cake and decorate it, uh, featuring an excellent car show, classic Jeeps, motorcycles, and more. Uh, and, of course, the winning announcements are going to be at 4 o'clock. So go on up to Huntsville. The next one I have is the Easterfest car show. It is today. It goes on from 10, so it's starting in just a little bit till 4 p.m. Custom cars, custom trucks, motorcycles, best paint, so on for the awards. There's an Easter egg hunt for the Where kids, Mike. This is actually in Kerrville, Texas, so it's a bit of a drive. But it's a beautiful day, so get on Ooh, out yeah. there and do it. Uh, it is today. Entry fee is $30. There's a $5 for 50-50 raffle and so on. Uh, and it does benefit uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and the uh, Resource Center for Ladies out there. So go ahead and enjoy that, and it's a good, worthy cause. And the last one I have is uh, the Space City Car Cruisers going on in League City. It is today. Um, it is the Walter Hall Park 807 Highway 3 North in League City. And it goes from uh, 7 this morning until 4 p.m. Registration is $40. And we're talking about car shows. Mm -hmm. um, my buddy Craig Beerman owns uh, Speed and Sport Chrome Plating. I've known for a lifetime. Um, he has the Chrome and Coffee thing. That'll be next Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, 9 to noon yep. over at the Avalon Diner. But he's also announced and is promoting... A big car show called the Texas Elite Auto Showcase. And it's going to be in August, August 10th and 11th. So it's a Saturday-Sunday deal, and it's going to be at NRG Park, NRG Center, mm -hmm. where they have the big, big car shows and stuff. So he's going to have a show there. And it's called Texas Elite Auto Showcase. And uh, you can learn more about that for the August 10th and 11th show by going to... Info at Texas Elite Auto Showcase dot com or the website Texas Elite Auto mm -hmm. Showcase dot com. So that's coming up. I didn't I didn't know that you guys knew about that, but he's been passing out these cards. Yeah, and uh, Steve Green is helping him with it. You yes, know, he runs Autorama. the uh, Autorama in Houston and Dallas, so it ought to be a pretty good show. Yeah. Particularly yeah. in the summertime, whenever you're looking for someplace cool to go to a car yep. show, and yep. especially in August. Yeah, yep. To say the least. All right. A um, couple of stories making. Well, let's see. Do I want to do recalls? Let's. You tell us. All right. Well, let's do the recalls, shall we? Let's do them. Subaru is uh, recalling nearly 119,000 mid-sized wow. crossovers and sedans for an issue that could prevent airbags from deploying in a crash. The oh, recall no. covers certain 2020 to 2022 Outback mid-sized crossovers and legacy. Mid-sized sedans. It's very popular vehicles in that line. Pretty much so. Kia, recalling 427,000 Tellurides over a potential defect that could cause those vehicles to roll away while in park. Now, in Houston, <laughs> Texas, that's not an issue because it's so flat here. But if you live in a, in a hilly kind of a part of the country, wherever you are, that would be an issue. Yeah. Hey, uh, did you see that? Wait a minute. There that car's go. running ah. down the hill. There's nobody driving it. <laughs> 
It's the self-driving. 2024, uh, 2020 to 2024 Telluride large crossovers. You don't want to have that thing coming mm-hmm. at you no. without a driver. The um, intermediate shaft and right front drive shaft on those vehicles might not be fully engaged because of suspected improper assembly by the supplier. Uh oh. <laughs> and there's probably one supplier. Dealers will be yeah. notified starting May 13th. Owners will be notified starting May 15th. Hmm. There are other recalls. The Ram Promaster van, 21 to 22, left turn signal and taillight may fail. Side curtain airbag inflators may rupture in the Chrysler 300 and the Dodge Charger from 2018 to 2021. All these are recalls now. Driver's airbag may not deploy in the Chrysler Pacifica and the Voyager from 23 to 24. Uh, Every Jeep, Gladiator, Grand Cherokee, Grand Wagoneer, (laughs) Wagoneer, 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, 4,500, and 5,500 Rams from 23 to 24 model year. Um, That is uh, also part of that driver's airbag may not deploy. Hmm. Loss of drive power from damaged charging unit. The Kia EV6, 22 to 24. Jaguar E-Pace, 21 to 24. Brad, I'm sorry, brake pad wear warning light failure. Some of these things you just wonder. It's like, really? How'd that happen? Yeah. Um, Let's see. Loss of drive power from damaged charging unit Genesis. GV 60, 70, 80, Ionic 5, and Ionic 6 from the 23 to 24 model years. And uh, Mercedes Benz. I was waiting. Lots of them. 21 to 24 model years, improperly secured 48 volt ground connection. Well, that would not be a good thing no. because your car wouldn't run. Yeah. <clears throat> so those are some of the recalls. I was waiting for the Mercedes. Yeah, they they um, I don't I don't know I, they've got some issues, some serious issues. Mars, what are you doing over there? You're not participating. <laughs> He's trying to get his guest on. Is he? He's working with his guest. And Mars Mars has this uh, thing with headsets. Yeah. And he's got lots of them going on over there. And he's got buttons to push. And I got buttons to push. <laughs> that he always forgets to push. Yeah, and I got an earbud in this ear underneath the headset so that I can monitor the program on the outgoing. I got the guest are we still on that headset. On, are we, let me Man, ask you this. Are we still on iHeartRadio? Are we still on the air? Yes, yeah. sir. We are. We are. We're good. We are good. See, in the old days, you'd have that switch right in front of you, and it would be lit up. You yes, in the old cough button, uh-huh. the ear. in the old days, mute yeah. button. Yes. In, in the, the old when we were days. on the radio, that the radio station had absolutely no listeners, none. It didn't rank. But we anywhere. had the buttons. We had, we the, had buttons. the buttons. We had buttons, and we were broadcasting, but nobody could hear us, and nobody listened to the radio station. There was so a that few, was a problem. But you know, the federal prisons don't always have radio. Well, yeah, <laughs> especially right. in the D block. The D block seemed to be pretty yeah. good, though. The D block. Yeah. Is that where Elvis danced? Yeah. Was the D block? Was it? I don't know. I don't know. Jailbreak. Jailhouse Rock. Jailhouse Rock. That's what it was. And Jailbreak. That's a different one. All right. We'll do uh, more headlines coming up in the next hour. Hey, we'd love to hear from you. Just shoot us an email. Our address here is info at inwheeltime.com. We'll be back in a minute. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggieland? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. 
Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. It's the end wheel time car talk show. Greg Blight, Greg Riley with Garage <laughs> Deluxe joins us to talk about a collector car tour not too far away. Nope. Also, Jeff has this week's racing calendar, and Mr. Mars has an in-depth review of the Infinity QX55. All right. Something tells me that that's a pretty nice vehicle. Yes. Yeah, just the very way it nice. Sounds. Very nice. Yeah. I, there's something about that QX55 that just has a ring. I like it. Wasn't there a Cadillac 55 or something? There was a 62s. lot of things in 55, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I was already here. Yeah. Today's In Wheel Time is sponsored by Houston Meekum Auction, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We need more Jeff Zekin. And uh, I'm Don Armstrong. Our engineer, IT director of engineering is what I have noted mm-hmm. here. David Ainsley is still in yeah. bed. Yeah. He hasn't. He hasn't checked in with you yet, has he? No, sir. No, nah, he's sleeping in. Randy Borchardine checked in. He's he's. It's been a while since we've had Paint a chance house. to talk to him. We need yeah. to talk yeah. to him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's been pretty busy. He said. Yeah, Suze is hobbling in this morning. She yep. heard us or something. Yep. Smelled us, I probably. She's got we had donuts, so she's looking for a donut. Yeah, exactly. Well, look who's joined us now, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is, Greg Riley. Good morning, and I have my headset on. I heard, I heard you mentioning Mars and the headsets. He said to make sure I had a headset, so I've got my headset on, so I'm official. You are official. <laughs> uh, you're official something, but, yeah. you know, whatever it is. But That's what it is. Good to see you, Greg. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. As a matter of fact, I was thinking earlier, it's been two years since I was last on with you guys. Uh-oh. That's quite a while. So are you serious? You. It's been two years? Two years, I, and I've been really busy for the last two years. Have you? Avoiding us. Well, something happened today because you're not too busy <laughs> exactly. enough to talk to us. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're going to go play cars. We adopted two kids, so the last two years have been taken up with adopting kids and and uh, uh, in, integrating them into our family of now seven kids. Wow, so, congratulations. Anyway, Very good. Thanks. Holy Toledo, yeah. Greg. I mean, you know, there's some sort of, uh, uh, obviously, some thing going on with you that you're adopting kids. I like it. Can you name them all? Well, let's see. There's uh, Katie, Brian, uh, uh, Joni, uh, Brandon, Colin, Morgan, and White. I think I got them all. <laughs> that's, that's seven. seven. That's seven. If you ask me the birth dates, we're going to have problems. Okay. Yeah. Now, are they of driving age, and you're going to get them all nice cars? Well, um, I, we have uh, we have five of the seven that are actually grown, and then we have a 10 and a 13-year-old, and I'm officially the oldest dad in the elementary school. And I get called grandpa all the time. But that's, okay, <laughs> that's also technically true. So, <laughs> well, very good. They're very nice. Well, um, so Garage Deluxe, you know, uh, and I had to call Mars yesterday. I said, you know, I can't find Garage Deluxe. All I keep pulling up is these companies that do these really cool build outs on Garage, but I don't think Greg's that that person. He says, oh well, no. You could you could find us on Facebook though. Garage DLX. Garage Dialect. It's because the, the Euro Garage Deluxe is taken by a, a European garage band, and I couldn't get I couldn't get that uh, that Euro. But, uh, band. Anyway, you can find us on Instagram and on uh, Facebook, and uh, actually, my my main website is gsriley.com because I do a number of other things besides just the car stuff. So it's all integrated into one website. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm writing this down as we speak. Yeah, I am too. Because I, I, I <laughs> couldn't never... find anything. And Morris says, well, I, I, wait a minute. I, calls me back three hours later. Well, I found it. It's Garage DLX. <laughs> well, I was at home when you called. I was on the road when well, you, you didn't, called. You, did, you didn't say that. He was at the liquor store. Uh, you know I got to give you a hard time. <laughs> Always. Um, 
So, Greg, tell me about this uh, collector car tour. Well, we're doing a tour of historic Beaumont, Texas, April 18th, 19th, and 20th. And uh, it's mostly pre-World War II cars, but we do have a few post-war cars. Uh, you know, mostly when you think about these types of cars, you think about the Concours type events where you see the cars on static display. But the owners love to drive their cars just as much as the hot rodders and street rodders and, uh, you know, other guys do. And so this is the fourth such tour that I've done that allows uh, uh, these guys to get together, uh, you know, have some camaraderie, eat some good food, go to some museums and have fun driving their cars. And uh, I, I jokingly call it the automotive luxury lifestyle, but that's really a misnomer because uh, most of these guys are just like me. They spend most of their time under the hood greasy to keep these old procs running. But uh, it's a lot of fun, and we've got some really fantastic cars lined up for the event. Give me an example of some of the cars, Greg. Well, we have a 1929 Packard Roadster, a 1936 Cord 810 um, uh, Muscleback. I forgot the exact name of it. We have is a it, 1937 it, was, Mercedes. I was just going to ask, is that that red one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What, what we're doing is we're rolling the pictures that you sent Mike while you're while you're talking. Yeah, we got that yellow one up with the hood up right now. Oh, that's the LaSalle. That's a 1940 LaSalle. And uh, we also have a 1957 Rolls Royce, and I'll be bringing my 1957 Ford Skyliner, which you guys uh, may remember a long time ago uh, when I was on the radio program. I drove it down to the radio station, but that's been a long time ago and a lot of cars ago. And uh, But we're going to have a lot of fun, and uh, the, the folks over in Beaumont have really rolled out the red carpet for us. Uh, we're promising local media coverage by the CBS affiliate and uh, the various museums and stops that we're going to make uh, have uh, really gone over the way to accommodate us. Mike probably is familiar with the McFadden Ward House, which was built by a, an oil baron in 1903. And uh, that's one of our, our, our major stops. And they're going to allow us on the on the driveway, on the grounds. Nobody gets to do that. So we're going to get to do that, wow. uh, which is a lot of fun. And uh, there's, just, there's just there's a number of different stops we're going to make. I could I could go through them all, but coincidentally, the cars and coffee event over there on the silo is going on the morning of Saturday the 19th, and so we're going to go out there and join all the hot rodders and street rodders. And uh, uh, they're not going to be expecting us, but I think they're going to get quite a quite a kick out of what we show up with. They crash into party. Okay, yeah, exactly. Party. How fun! Are you going to take any Corvairs over there? You know, I don't have a Corvair running currently, although I have two. Uh, sitting in my garage, okay, and uh, I, as you know, I have quite a history of those cars, and uh, I do a lot of work for other people, and I'm in, actually in the process of building a, a 150-horsepower turbocharged engine for a club member. It's going to be really nice, and uh, it's kind of a legacy thing. The car belonged to his dad, and he wants to keep it forever and have fun with his kids and pass it along, so we're going to make it really, really nice. Is it, uh, is it, what year is it? 63 convertible. 63, little square body one. Yeah, the little, the, the earlier ones. Uh, yeah, I, I know you're a fan of the later ones, the '65 to nines, and I've got a '65 as well. And uh, so, anyway, we have fun with Corvairs, but I like all kinds of cars. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, I don't think I ever met a car that I didn't like. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old, and I'm not ashamed to tell you that I'm coming up on my 62nd birthday in about six weeks. Well, so, I uh, think a birthday spanking is in order. I'm not going to give it to you, but uh, I think we we could probably line up somebody that could. I, I, my, my wife already has that plan. <laughs> it, won't, it won't be a problem. But I, I got we're it. Gonna, we're going to have a lot of fun and go to a lot of interesting places. Uh, we're going to go to the Fire Museum of Texas. You know, they used to call Beaumont the museum capital of Texas, and it's probably not top of mind when you think of somewhere to go and have fun and play with your cars. But there's some amazing things to see and do over there and uh, some very interesting history. As a matter of fact, one of our local heroes, which is a Wildcat Wolf man, during the 1930s, uh, owned three Duesenbergs. He bought three Duesenbergs too. Well, that's not something you typically associate with Beaumont, Texas. You don't think about uh, Duesenbergs and Beaumont, Texas in the same in the same sentence, but uh, that's a that's a real thing. So we're going to tell people about that history and uh, uh, kind of tell them how, how all that came to be. And uh, I grew up over there, and Mike uh, grew up over in the Golden Triangle area as well. Uh, but one of the things that I experienced as a kid is there was a lot of a lot of money over there. So there was a lot of interesting cars when I grew up. Uh, they tended to be more towards muscle cars and luxury cars. I used to say that the city was awash with Eldorados and Fleetwoods and things like that. There you and, go. And uh, my dad actually owned a couple of gas stations. So I spent uh, a lot of time during my youth with my dad uh, servicing these cars. And he used to play a game with me called Identify the Car. So we would, when, during uh, slack times, we would sit 
in front of the gas station, and as the cars came, uh, came by, I had to identify what they were. And uh, so anyway, that's what kind of started all this for me. And I'll tell you a little bit about folks a little bit about that when they come on the tour. Well, um, I do know that uh, there is a spindle top oil museum over there as well. <clears throat> I know that I visited that. Uh, actually, did a video uh, over there, and they had a very cool, I guess, a '40s era gasoline tanker truck that delivered gas to the gas stations wow. back in the day, completely restored in a tight barn in there. And uh, I thought, man, would I love to have that. Now, that would be uh, a great vehicle to take on the collector car tour. Yes, that's. Uh, I think you're thinking of the uh, Texas Energy Museum in downtown Beaumont. And uh, they have a lot of interesting uh, vehicles in there. And uh, you mentioned the tanker truck, but they also have some horse-drawn tankers in there as well. And in addition to that, there is what is now known as the Boomtown Museum. When I was a kid, they called it Gladys City, but it's a recreated Boomtown Museum from the Spindletop era. And they have a gusher out there, kind of our finale uh, Saturday evening, because they're going to blow the gusher for us. Yeah. Uh, the, the Lucas gusher spewed oil 150 feet in the air for nine days because they didn't know how to cap it. And uh, I tell people that you don't necessarily think of Beaumont in the automobile industry in the same uh, sentence. But they grew up together. Uh, when the Lucas Gusher came in, it kind of proved the gasoline or oil was plentiful and cheap. And uh, up until that time, you know, there was kind of a battle between steam cars, electric cars, and gasoline cars. And it proved that uh, the ability to produce gasoline inexpensively and abundantly uh, uh, was, was going to be a thing. And, in fact, the ExxonMobil refinery over there, which was then called the Magnolia Refinery, I believe I'm saying that this is correct, is the oldest continuously operating refinery in the country, if not the world. I had no clue, but I, I, don't, I do know that John Hovis has a Magnolia sign yeah, in, yes. in, yeah, in, yeah. In, the Hemi, in the in the Hemi hideout. So uh, we knew that it did exist. Uh, is 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 this a club? Garage Deluxe is it a club? Well, Garage Deluxe is kind of my online presence. Um, it's uh, you know it's it's kind of a virtual garage as well as my real garage, and it's just kind of a way for me to share my passion for cars with uh, with my friends and uh, you know i do a lot of actual work on cars but it's also a virtual garage it's kind of a virtual gathering place if you will and uh, i gosh i've been using that name for going on 20 years now and uh it, it's a lot of fun and i have a, a number of followers on facebook and instagram but you know you guys are you guys are serious journalists okay i'm a guy with grease under my fingernails just having fun in my garage and and sharing my passion with my friends and that's really what the, the Garage Deluxe thing is all about. Yeah, well, we're really of the elite. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what we are. We're, we're up there. We're the elite garage. Yeah, no, we're that's not. not. We're not even here. supposed to be yeah. here. We, yeah. No, no, we just kind of fell into this garage, and uh, we started doing a, a car talk show, and somehow we're still doing it. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned the various clubs, and so we have members of the Antique Automobile Club of America, the Classic Car Club of America, the Sports Car Club of America that are going to be part of this thing. And we're going to get to do a couple of private garage tours. There's a gentleman over in Beaumont whose name I won't mention, but he has a garage full of supercars. And we're going to go see his supercar collection. And uh, then I have some friends that are part of this Lemons Racing effort, and we're going to visit their Lemons Racing Garage. And that's just a couple of things that we're going to do. It's not all about just museums and things like that. You know, it's a really what this is about is about a – group of guys uh, getting together and playing cars we just play with stuff that's a little older and weirder than some of the stuff that you're probably familiar with well um so am i invited in my 23 year old corvette you absolutely are absolutely okay uh, basically the, the only thing that we're excluding and it's not and we're not trying to be exclusionary is we're not including uh hot rods uh street rods and, and modern muscle cars and things like that and the reason for that is those guys have plenty of events, cars and coffee events, uh, yeah, the power time. tours, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of for a, a different group of people that, that don't really have as much of an outlet to show and drive their cars. They tend to be maybe a little bit older. Uh, cars are in some instances a little bit more valuable. 
Uh, but it's a way that those guys can go and have fun driving their cars in a group. It's kind of like uh, when you see the group of Harleys, you see 30 Harleys, except there were a bunch, we're a bunch of gray old guys driving, uh, you know, really old weird stuff that nobody ever sees. And that's the, with the pictures that we were showing of that, of, of what you sent Mike, it seems like there's a, a like a, a great Gatsby kind of theme with all the older cars and people are dressed in the period of that vehicle. The, the women houses. have the long flowing dresses, the mansions and things. So to me, it's a great Gatsby kind of look. Absolutely. And uh, the Texas Vintage Society is going to come out and mention costume. Some of those folks are going to come out in costumes and join us from various parts of the uh, of the tour. So this is going to be great fun. And it's it's not the typical thing that you, you see when you think of car show or people having a car show. Well, I have to tell you that I'm going to be dressed in costume too, but you, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you what that is. Yeah, he's not, not going to tell you what period that is. Oh my God! I, I'm worried he's going to come as one of these furries in a bunny suit or something. Okay? Wow. We don't discriminate, okay? Listen, I got a really nice pair of red pumps that I'm just dying to let everybody see. Yeah. And it is Easter, so who knows? Yeah, it is Easter. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Well, it, it sounds like a great time, Craig. How many how many cars are you guys are you expect? to uh, bring the iron out, as it were. Our, our limit is 20 cars because we're visiting some, some private homes and uh, some museums. And if you have 20 cars, you have a group of 40 people. I think we're sitting on about 13 right now, and uh, we've got you know, a little less than a month to go, so I think we're going to hit the full 20. Uh, uh, there's a newsletter that went out today inviting people, and of course you guys. And uh, So if anybody would like to take part in the tour, they can uh, send me an email at greg at gsriley.com, gsriley.com, and I'll send them entry information. There is no cho- there is no charge for the tour at all. Uh, when we go to the restaurant, there will be separate checks. The only thing we're going to take up, uh, 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 pass the hat for is we're going to have box lunches at Wuthering Heights Park over there, which is a really nice uh, park with uh, plenty of parking and shade and all that, and we're going to have a nice lunch there uh, catered by a local deli, and uh, I'll pass the hat for that. But other than that, there's no charge at all to participate you can participate in some of it, all of it, or none of it. Whatever you want to do, we're going to accommodate you. Wonderful. How fun. Three weeks away. And yes, it's sir. the Garage Deluxe Collector Car Tour. And uh, they're going to make a run over there at the Beaumont area, historic Beaumont, Texas. Wonderful. You're familiar with that, aren't you, Mars? Yeah, and, and he sent me the information. and, and uh, you, know, you, the you, gotta, you gotta to dig out something of your collection well, and take I, I'd it? I'd like to at least... You know, make a stop by and see some things. Maybe. I think that old lawnmower of yours would probably uh, be okay. <laughs> and you can dress like Rhett Butler. <laughs> I have a hat. Let yeah. me tell you, I have a hat. Well, you're going to have to get the dye out, maybe a wig, but uh, whatever the <laughs> case I, I got my little soft cap like the British sports cars got. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A derby. That's what I'll have, my little floppy hat. A little derby. Got it. Yeah. Greg, it's great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Guys, good to see you, and I hope it won't be two years again. I, well, let's make it a make sure it fun not talk. to be. And yeah. Con- congratulations on the adoptions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you. you talk to you soon. Greg Riley, Garage Deluxe Collector Car Tour, uh, April 18th. So Those are some good pictures. Find too. out all about it uh, at uh, Garage DLX mm-hmm. on Facebook. Okay? Yep. All right. The In Wheel Time Car Talk show is available 24 7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. And podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our three hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Yep. The In Wheel Time Car Talk show continues right after this quick break. Pro Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? 
In Real Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone? Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Mecham experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Mecham.com. Well, leave it to me to punch the wrong button. That's and, all right. And I, I, we were having a conversation about some studio uh, adjustments that we're going to make. Welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk studio Show. Stuff. Um, studio time now stuff. for the racing calendar. Oh, that's me. Sponsored by the Texas <laughs> Muscle Car Club Challenge. Well, I want to tell you, there's not much going on this weekend. Formula One is not for a few more weeks. Well, NHRA, it's Easter weekend. NHRA is, uh, you know, they're on a little hiatus and all that good stuff. Um, so the only thing we have is NASCAR, and that comes on tomorrow, March 31st. It's at Richmond, the Richmond Raceway, 7 p.m. on Fox. So it is a night race. Mike, there's tickets available if you want to go. Richmond, Virginia. Uh, now, you know, uh, speaking, of, speaking of which, um, don't they have a race coming up in Dallas? At uh, Texas Motor Speedway? I there is one do. coming up uh, April 14th Okay, well, at the co- Texas uh the Texas, Texas Motor Speedway, yeah. Yeah, so a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. It's at 3.30 on FS1. Man, but I, I was thinking, well, it's close enough. Yeah. You could take it. What time is it in the well, afternoon? Which one you want to know? Tomorrow is no, 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 the no, 14th not tomorrow, the Dallas, Dallas. Oh, it's at 3 p.m. Eastern. So you could... you could. Well, that's that's the that's the uh, the Xfinity. Oh, that's no, it a, is. It's, it's everything. Yeah, 3 p.m. Because the next weekend is Talladega. Okay. So you can see the NASCAR boys up at Texas mm-hmm. um, next weekend. Uh, yeah, two the weekends. 14th, yeah. yeah, the 14th. Yeah, they'll they'll yeah. be there. And then there. at the end of April, we've got the Hot Rod Tour of Texas. We do. That's and good. Well, I guess we're all, we're all going to go on that. Yep. So what are we going to do for programming? Because we, we'll be on the tour. We won't have a show that weekend. Mars? Well. Yes? So we're gonna we're gonna shoot a lot of B roll, and we're also we're gonna interview people. We're gonna do a lot of interviews. But at, that, that but that doesn't say what we're going to do on the air for our. We're live going show. to take and combine all the material we gather up on Thursday night and all day Friday. Hopefully, we're gonna make it to the drive-in, even maybe get a little bit of footage there, and then Friday night. We're going to put it all together and create what's a three-hour show. Yeah, I was going to say, what's, <laughs> what's this we stuff? Because it's only one person that's doing the editing, <laughs> and it's going to broadcast it on Saturday because it ain't going to be me. David oh, will no. help you. We, 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 we're, we've got a plan. We're going to do it. It's going to be great. Are you going to let us in on it, or are you just going to happen when it happens? Well, i got to fine-tune the details. <laughs> now, last <laughs> he year. Hasn't a, he hasn't done a damn thing. Last the year for the, for the uh, drive-in, it rained, and it was so kind of Washed out. We barely made it back from the restaurant to the hotel, which is maybe a half a block away. We ended up in the lobby. Mike set up cameras in the lobby, and we sat around drinking cocktails and sort of reminiscing about cars and car attitudes. We had our Kathy our, had her debut. Kathy had her debut. Uh, Leslie was there. Yep. You were you were in rare form. David and I could not stop laughing. So hopefully that won't be the same experience because we'll have all the the b-roll and we'll oh, have all that but it'll be a better experience <laughs> yeah we're gonna make it out to the drive-in and and uh maybe get a, a couple of interviews from people out there we had some yeah. really great people that we met and talked to last absolutely year. and uh, we're going back to the uh the builder right the uh performance samson performance samson performance, yeah. and yeah. Samson okay. performance and restoration yeah what a place yeah 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 it's it's 
impressive place. It is. And, and, the, and the, the kids, kids, the people that run it, I call them kids because well, they they're, what, they're kid. in their 20s and yeah. their early 30s. Yeah. yeah. And they know what they're doing. It's a big it's, family situation. I mean, it's family and they got friends that run the different shops and the different pieces of it. It just... We're also going to go to the uh, Shiner, the Spetzel Brewery. Yes. Well, I won't be there because we're going to be touring another part of the countryside. But, yeah, that's, that's you are? part of it. Yeah, Kathy and I are going to be doing our own little oh. tour. Are They're we, going to be working are, their way up. Yeah. Are, are, you going to, uh, are you going to join us in Fredericksburg? Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be the goal. Yeah. Okay. That'll be on Saturday mm-hmm. night. Yeah. Yeah. So we ought to have a good time. Are you going to go up to Fredericksburg with us, too? Uh, no, I won't be able to make it to Fredericksburg. I hope to be at Victoria. Uh, and Thursday, do Thursday, Thursday night, evening, uh-huh. and then Friday morning, get out in front of the tour a little bit, and uh, be ready at the first stop, okay. and and do some interviews is, there. Is Becky coming along? Uh, no, it's kind of the iffy part Aww. right now. Becky, you need to go. Well, I agree. Be she needs to go. Yeah. And uh, I got uh, a guy I know that is coming with his son. His son was on the tour last year, so. Son invited him to come along. He's going to shoot some B-roll from inside the car as they go through different areas, and we're going to kind of well, explain to everybody what B-roll means. Just some, some like when they go by the schools from the perspective, go by the schools or go through the towns, and the people are there and stuff. A lot of just background type information. And they're going to visit the jail where I'm going to be in. Well, we we want to get an interview from between the That's bars. That's going to be the, the C roll for sell. <laughs> C roll for sell. Yeah. That's it. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's going to uh, be so great. Time now for this hour's car review, and you're going to have to hurry. Actually, you want to do it now? I can talk fast. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Mars had a chance to drive the Infinity QX55 Go Mic. It's 2024 Infinity QX55. It is a coupe-style CUV. Now, that's very important, and we'll get to that in a moment. It comes in three trims, Lux, Essential, and Century. We had the Century all-wheel drive. Now, this is a small luxury SUV, first-gen, so it's a carryover design from the time it came out. So we're doing some tweaking. Got adaptive front lighting on it. We've got rain-sensing wipers on it. Uh, got the reverse tilt-down side mirrors that I mm. really have come to enjoy those really well when I'm driving. Roof rails, power lift gate, got a power moon roof, rolling on some nice 20-inch aluminum wheels. Inside is where you're really going to find the luxury. Leather seating with wood trim surfaces all around. We had the zero-gravity front seats. Haven't talked about them in a while, but those are some really comfortable seats. Uh, I had the front, cri- front climate control seats. Now, that means they're heated and they're cooled. We had the dual screens with a rotary dial for the top screen, and this one kind of works pretty good for having two screens with the little dial over there. You can pretty well run it without having to look at it, but it's, uh, you know, eh. You can take it or leave it, eh. But it's, uh, it did work pretty good. We had the Infinity infotainment system set up, and it's got the surround view camera for whenever you're driving or you're backing out. That works really well for that. Had the heads-up display for the driver and the 16-speaker Bose audio system. Now, up under the hood, we had the 2.0 variable compression engine. Now, this is the only in, uh, engine you can get in the uh, QX55 with all-wheel drive. Uh, that's a, it's a unique, very unique engine. 268 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque, CVT, tan- CVT transmission with paddle shifters. Now, this is to simulate manual shifting. Now, uh, we'll get to that again here in a minute. And the city, the EPA says you should have 22 miles per gallon in the city, Highway 28. I got 24.8 across 230 miles. This is a very smooth driving vehicle. It is not a hot rod. It is a luxury CUV. And this is where the styling, to me, you have to arrange your expectations. I, I read some other people's reviews. They were a little disappointed in the performance. It's not a performance car, but it's that coupe styling for an SUV, and it creates the expectation of more performance. And you go into it, oh, this is going to be fun to drive. It's a luxury SUV. It's not. So you just you got to set your expectations according to what you're driving. Got that smooth Infinity ride. It's very comfortable. The steering, even with the run flats, this is a nice riding, driving vehicle. Base model, 51500 Base trim price, 58500 As tested, $62,725. Whoa, I like the car. Yep. Look at a BMW X4 or a Genesis GV70 if you're looking for something to compare it to. But this is one, if you're in that market, 
This is one to look at. Very nice. My wife loved it as well. It's a good-looking car. If you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook. Back in a flash. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. It's the end wheel time car talk show. Ahead, Mustang Maven Randy <laughs> Weldon brings his cattle prod to talk about one <laughs> heck of a party. A big old 60th anniversary kind of Ford Mustang celebration. Later, Jeff has this week's Cars on TV. And I'll have this week's stories making automotive headlines. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Seekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. I hope you liked the uh, introduction. The Maven part? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. He doesn't Randy know. He's Weldon. shaking his head. Randy there he Weldon. is. <laughs> shaking his head. Never been called a Maven before. Well, you now have. <laughs> I don't even know what a Maven is. Put that on a resume. But, uh, Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. But I don't know. But at any rate, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm good. How about you all? Well, uh, very well. I was just looking at this uh, information sheet that uh, Mr. Mars supplied me. Man, this is going to be a huge bash over in Birmingham, Alabama. Well, you, you, I think this is the only car, the only vehicle that's been in production for 60 straight years. No other one out there. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big thing. We've got folks coming in from around the world. Now, is this the same uh, annual event that you several years ago had down at the uh, Air Museum down at uh, Ellington? No, that's a national show. We do four national shows a year. Those are usually put on by a local club. And uh, in that case, at the Lone Star Flight Museum, that was one that the three local clubs here in Houston and Beaumont came together to, to put on. The, when I talk about local club, I'm talking about local chartered clubs by the Mustang Club of America. Gotcha, yeah. Because right, well, there's a bunch of groups out there that aren't chartered or anything. But anyhow, those are national shows. This is actually being put on by Mustang Club of America. And uh, it's a it's a global event, actually. Do they do they have more shows than this once a year? Well, not 60th celebrations. Well, uh, well, of course not. But I mean, is is the, the, does the Mustang Club of America itself put on more than one a year? No, no. Oh, okay. uh, matter of fact, Mustang Club of America makes in, basically ensures that we have at least four shows a year. And, you know, if, if, like, we don't have one approved for a local club or a local club hasn't stepped up, then MCA can actually step in and put a show on. Okay. Well, registration for this event was limited to 2,500 cars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 2,501, you're out. <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let you drive through the gate, but you've got to park over there in the woods. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, so uh, are you going to go, I hope? Oh, I'll be there, yeah. Actually, um, 
I'll be there uh, working the event. I'll be doing the emceeing and the music and stuff like that. How fun. Well, yeah, I can't so, wait for it. So Rand, the Randy Weldon Show. Actually, we've got, uh, I think you all have met Yolanda, but we've got the Bubba and Yoda Show. So, you know, we'll <laughs> create, uh, we'll broadcast. We've got a low-power uh, FM transmitter. So we'll broadcast live WMCA Car Show Radio. How uh, fun. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. At, uh, at Having a track event and a car show going on at the same time is a lot of fun to begin with. So, wait, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do, do you, you, there's a track event that goes along with it? There is, yep. Well, We've explain got, that. I, I don't see that on the show, on the thing here. Uh, there. Well, it's being held at Barber Motorsports Park just for the reason that, uh, you know, look, the Ford, the, the, the Ford Automotive Company, they don't stay in business by people restoring old Mustangs. So uh, we've got those cars to look at. Ever since the beginning of time, those cars will be there. But for the people that want to get out on the track and drive their cars, the new cars they've bought, we've got a track event. And it's a three-day event. If you've got a Mustang or a Ford of any type, you can bring it and put it on the track. Wonderful. And just, just from my edification, how much does it cost for you and your Mustang to go? You know, it's been, uh, for the track event? Yeah, well, it's, both. It's, it's been right around $175 a day for that. Of course, you want to get your own track insurance. Um, but as far as uh, people attending, display cars can be in there for $100 uh, for the event. And uh, if you want to just attend as a spectator, it's $25 a day or $50 for two days, or I believe it's uh, $65 for three days. We need uh, to get... As far as... Go ahead. I'm sorry, no, Jeff. go, go, go. No, I was just going to say, as far as putting your car in the show, you know, there's all sorts of other associated things. You can buy tickets to a banquet and stuff like that. All this, at this point, sold out. I mean, we're a week away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to get an idea of, you know, a national show like this for one make and model of a car. 60 years. For 60 years. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is a big deal. I, I, I would love to attend. I'm not a Mustang person, but I'd like to attend. I mean, it would be fun oh. to go. My sister and my brother-in-law, they're Mustang through and through. I've got a very good friend in, in Castle Rock, Colorado. He's a Mustang guy. His parents were a Ford Motor Company execs, Mustang throughout the family. He needs to go to this. So, Todd, if you're listening, you need to get your butt out there. Need to need to come out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a you know think about it. it we, the 60th is going to happen once. I mean, 10 years ago we did the 50th, and mm -hmm. we did that. Those were both in Las Vegas and at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Um, but now we're at the 60th, and so the next big one will be you know probably the 65th and then the 70th. Uh, but in between there, it's just going to be the local national shows that we put on four times a year. Um, you know, I, it, you know, you bring this up that you know, you know, so many people that have owned Mustangs or own Mustangs. Um, I was uh, I, I was fortunate on this trip. I got contracted by the the Birmingham Barons to do some work in their baseball stadium. So I'm going up on Monday. I'll be there all week. But in in setting up with the Barons to do work on their on their video system. Um, the guy that's their CFO brought. He asked me if I knew a specific person who owns a Mustang Museum, uh, just out in Odenville, Alabama, and I knew the name. I haven't met the gentleman, but it turns out the CFO of the Barons, this gentleman owns that museum, bought his parents' Mustang, hmm. and he's got it in the museum. So you, you know, you can talk to just about anybody, and you're going to run into somebody that has had somebody close to them or somebody in the family that owned a Mustang. Yeah, there's a Mustang tie-in somewhere. Hey, yeah, somewhere. we know you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Fortunately or unfortunately, you know me. <laughs> there was, we talked about an event that uh, you met up with uh, a club last weekend uh, here in town. It was a cruise. That's correct. Yeah. We did we, a cruise to the Pickett House out yep, in Woodville. Yep, we talked about uh, that. The, the Wild Horse Mustang Club out of Beaumont That's puts them. that on every year, yep. and they invite other people. So Northside was invited, and Mustang Club of Houston was invited, and we all cruised out there, had a great lunch. Uh, talked actually about another event coming up in July 17th. That's a, it's a cruise, basically kind of a history tour of southeast Texas over to uh, uh, the, where the battleground was. And it will end up basically cruising across the ferry with all the Mustangs on it. Yeah. Eating at the, uh, what's the name of the restaurant over there? The Battleship Inn or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Battle, Battle, yeah, I got Battle you. Ground, yeah. Battleground Inn. Battleground Inn or something. The yeah. galley. Right yeah. there. 
Yeah. You're talking about the San Jacinto Inn? Uh, yeah, I don't San think Jacinto Inn. Thank that's you, it. Don. Okay. Well, I, I go a beautiful by. weekend for it, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that, I'm, I'm excited. Are you going to drive over there or are you going to fly over there? I'm driving over, actually. I've got a lot of uh, uh, work equipment I've got to drag with me. Oh, gotcha. so you're not taking one of the Stangs? Not taking one of the Stangs. And uh, my stuff won't fit in the Stang. That's not going to happen. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's a, an easy 10 hour drive. It's not that big of a deal. It's Probably seven bad. for Randy. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, I- I'm excited for you. I-, I, w- I wish I were going. Um, we've got our own event with the. Uh, you know, Hot Rod Tour of Texas coming up here and uh, at the end of the month. So we're looking forward to doing that. And uh, is there anything going on with uh, Mustang Club of America in the Houston area coming up uh, this year? No, nothing with MCA this year coming up. Um, we're, uh, we've are we been talking to Vernon Wilhelm, who you guys know. Yes. Um, trying to get him to, to – he would love to do a national show, but we've got to have the volunteers to do it. Uh, when we did the uh, the show at the Lone Star Flight Museum, that took 110 volunteers, or wow. we had 110 people stand up, stand, you know, walk, stand up. What do I want to say? Belly up to the bar, basically, yeah. and, uh, and take part and volunteer. You guys saw it. You were there. Um, yeah. It took a lot to put that on. Uh, it, you've got to have those volunteers. So Vernon needs those volunteers. Uh, once he has that, and you know, assured uh, that he'll go ahead and petition the MCA to let us do another show here in Houston. Well, what a great venue that was! You, I mean, that that was such a well-oiled machine. Thanks to your volunteers, um, I was very impressed. And you guys put on a, a heck of a show. Uh, this uh, MCA thing, um, I, I mean, I, I was impressed. Well, they, you know, this one in the, in uh, Leeds, Alabama, Barber Motorsports Park is going to be an incredible one because you're in the southeast. You're right there in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, or you're in the hills, or whatever they call it over there, and um, you know, so there's a lot of uh, beautiful scenery. It'll be that time of year when everything's blooming, and you're going to have all this activity going on with everything at the track. You know, you're going to have a live track. You're going to have all these vendors out there. I know we've got uh, Celine's going to be there. We've got Shelby's going to be there. I'm not sure. Probably Roush. Uh, I'm not sure who all is going to be there, but um, we've got quite a few vendors lined up for it. And then, um, you know, you've got people coming in from around the world. I don't know if it's true, but I heard in October that you couldn't not rent a Mustang within 14 states of Alabama. Oh wow! Back in October, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but at that Lone Star Museum, uh, when we did the national show, we had people. I think 17 people come in from Australia, and they all rented Mustangs to come out to the show. Of course. So, are you? So that's the type of following that you've got. Are you bringing our our uh, friend, our mutual friend from Italy, over? Uh, Manuela, yeah. I don't know if she's coming over or not. You know, she got into city politics. She got elected to city council. Oh, wow. Over there. She's gotten pretty busy now. Good for her. Yeah. Well, you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If I, hey, she's I don't a smart know, lady. I don't, I don't know she if knows I us. So she's got to be very intelligent. Because, <laughs> you know, that's what it would be. She knows us. She's, it's all good. Well, it sounds I, like I'd tons of... I'd love to see her over here again, though. Sounds like tons of fun. Um, so, just for the... Just for the fun of it, where can a person go to get more information on the event? And I, I'll assume that since you're the TV guy, that you would have some sort of setup where you could get some sort of a live feed from the event. We're going to be doing live feeds. Uh, both they give me media pa- media pass at the track, so I'll be on the corners or wherever I can get in close enough to get some video. Uh, do some live feeds there, and then we're going to do some live feed interviews with people like Steve Celine. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Robert Kennedy that wrote a book called Unbridled about the Mustang II. Uh, we'll do uh, you know interviews with him. Uh, I've got uh, Shelby's lined me up with uh, a couple of guys there to do interviews with. Hopefully uh, Dave Morton's there from Meekum and we can uh, do an interview in his booth over there. So yeah, we do plan on doing live feeds. Where would you? Where would, where would we pick up a live feed? You would go to the uh, Mustang Club of America social page. And we'll be doing live feeds there. We'll do them through all three days throughout the, you know, it's a three-day event, so we'll do them all three days uh, throughout the event. Man, it sounds like a ton of fun. The date? I think it's going to be. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Well, my friend, it's uh, it's great to talk to you, Randy Weldon, and uh, good luck to you over there. We'll be thinking of you next weekend, and uh, we uh, look forward to hearing about it from you. Well, hopefully you guys will join in and see some of the live feeds and talk to us and... 
uh, we can get some people to, to chat back with you. We'd love that. Randy, take care of yourself. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on, guys. You, you take care. You be too. careful. Well, I was Brent. just thinking, I just checked the NHR schedule. I wonder if Bob Tasca would have been there because he's a Mustang guy. But That's right. according to the NHR schedule, it's going to conflict. So. Yeah, well, I don't think he's going to Maybe be. he could have the uh, Tasca boys there in the yeah, booth. He, we could send Mike in uh, his place. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got that, Mike? I got it. I got Mike it. for everything. Let me, let, me, let me put some more gas in the truck. <laughs> yeah. You need, you need some more stuff to do. He does. Just to keep I your mind, mind and hands more busy. More buttons to push. And that, that kind of thing. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, go help, I'll go help Randy. I'll be his, I'll you carry do his that. luggage. Yeah, you do that. Hey, the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for Inwheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our live weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. And podcasts, you can get those from your favorite podcast provider. Mm -hmm. The Inwheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to book now at Meekum.com. You know, one of the first <laughs> things I learned when I started in broadcasting <laughs> was don't ever eat while you're on the air. Particularly on the live show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what okay, happened? Guess what? I just broke that rule. <laughs> That's okay. I messed up the video because I was eating too. Jeffrey, every once in a while, brings in donuts or kolaches or something today. It was Shipley Donuts. There we boy, are. are they good. <laughs> yeah. They're we need good. them like we need a hole in the head as I take yeah, another exactly. bite of one. What did you have? I had the coconut topping. I just had the uh, chocolate filled. Okay, because I've got a variety. And Mars has got what? The apple? Apple. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you. And it's just around the corner. Don't it's actually anybody. between here and, and where my palatial estate is. So yeah, Out in the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. country Jeff, li Land. Jeff lives um, on the apron of the Sugarland Airport. So mm -hmm. if, you go over, if you want to go over there and, and wrap his house, then there's the yeah. place to do it. If you fly over, you might get a little... View. George says you get free tacos at Jeff at inwheeltime.com. <laughs> I've got to give people there's hundreds of thousands of tacos, I think. Give out. <laughs> Thank you, George. Wheels on TV. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. It is uh, 
Motor Trend this weekend. I'm only going to cut down to this weekend. And next week, I'm going to do something a little different. I saw something. Change. Wait a minute. Go ahead. While you're speaking of Motor Trend, mm-hmm. I saw a little banner. It says Motor Trend is going to become part of the Discovery Plus thing. Yep. They're, they're, what? Well, Discovery Plus is the uh, subscription side. Streaming service. Streaming side, yeah. It's not going to be on your normal TV or whatever channel you get for Discovery or Motor Trend. It's going to be on the Internet side. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I'm a Roku guy. Yeah, so. Well, you would probably get it. Then. Yeah, yeah, you can find hope. It. But uh, just, actually, Discovery's got some new car shows coming out later on, I believe, the end of April, beginning of June. They've been starting to advertise that. Maybe it'll be the in-wheel time show. It could be. But we're going to change it up. We're going to do something a little different. But today, uh, starting at 4 o'clock, you've got on, this is on Motor Trend TV, 4 till 7, you've got Bitchin' Rides. 8 to uh, 9 o'clock, you got Junkyard Empire. Roadworthy Rescues is on after that. And then your favorite, Don, tonight is Rust Valley Restorers. Yeah, uh, I like all those, actually. And then tomorrow, uh, starting at 2 o'clock, you got uh, Roadworthy Rescues again. It's sort of like a mini marathon all the way up until 7 p.m. And then you've got Texas Metals Loud and Lifted, which is a fairly new show. It's been out about uh, six months or so. That goes all the way through the end of the evening on Motor Trend TV. There you go. Well, you know, they had that <clears throat> big bridge collapse, killed a bunch of people yep. uh, in Baltimore. Well, the U.S. auto supply chain will be disrupted, will be disrupted by the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, dealing another blow to America's automotive ecosystem, still recovering from pandemic-related setbacks. It's a large port with a lot of flow through it, so it's going to have an impact. John Lawler with Ford Motor Company, he's the CFO, he said Tuesday on Bloomberg TV, he said, we'll work on the workarounds. Uh, We'll have to divert parts to other ports along the East Coast or elsewhere in the country. General Motors also said it's working to reroute vehicle shipments that had come through the port of Baltimore which is now closed, by the way, as authorities conduct a search and rescue and Mm -hmm. try to get that thing cleaned up over there. Um, The disruption comes as automotive inventories are just returning to normal following prolonged shortages of semiconductors and other essential automotive parts during the COVID-19 pandemic. The supply crisis exposed vulnerabilities in the U.S. auto industry, which has relied on just-in-time supply chain that can be broken by the interruption of production or distribution of just a few parts. Baltimore, for years, has been the top U.S. vehicle handling port with more than 847,000 cars and light trucks processed through there last year. European car makers, including BMW, Volkswagen, and Mercedes-Benz, have set up facilities in and around that port to handle vehicle shipments, and they're not being handled very yeah. well right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I always thought L.A. was the biggest port See, I for thought that, that kind too. of thing. Yeah. Well, that, that would be too. from the uh, West, Asian yeah, suppliers. And, but it, and it's not as big as Baltimore, though, is what, I guess... That's well, for the automotive industry. Yeah. Yeah. Who, do we know, who do we know has uh, phobias about bridges? Who? Me. You? <laughs> yeah. That's right, the Mackinac Bridge. Yeah. You won't go there. No, no. I, I cried going across it. I really did. Fisker dramatically reduced the price of the Ocean Crossover, its only model, as the electric car maker struggles to stay in business. The biggest cut the company is making applies to the top-end version of the Ocean called Extreme. Fisker will slash the price by $24,000, a 39% discount to Thirty nine seven ninety nine, including the maximum <laughs> destination fees, according to an email statement. Other iterations of the vehicle also will be much cheaper. A move Fisker said was designed to position the ocean as a more affordable and compelling EV choice. The markdowns are extreme measures for Fisker as it tries to weather liquidity challenges and the pending delisting of its stock. The company earlier this month paused production and warned... It may have to file for bankruptcy if it's unable to service its debt. Well, let me tell you something. If the company is going to go belly up, I don't want to be buying their car yeah. because I won't be able to get parts for it if I need to. Well, didn't for didn't certain they time. do that already once? Didn't Fisker go out of business once already? They did a while ago, back in, I believe, the 90s. Well, they, they paused production, let me put it that uh, way. Yeah, back well, in the eight, late production. 80s, early 90s. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. <clears throat> Here's one. This kind of reminds me of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh Uh-oh. Listen to this. Two technicians at a Milford, Connecticut dealership allegedly damaged a service customer's dream car 
during a joy ride where the older <laughs> technician <laughs> wanted to teach the younger one how to drive a manual transmission Great. vehicle. Yeah, do that in a customer's car. Yeah. The lesson didn't go well because the younger technician stalled the the customer's 2022 WRX multiple times, grinded the gears, and burned the clutch, according to Crandall Yop in his lawsuit against Dan Perkins Subaru. Yop's lawyer... Daniel Blinn of Rocky Hill, Connecticut, told Automotive News, there was damage to the car, and the type of driving here can damage a transmission. You think? When the technicians returned to the store, other employees tried to cover up the incident, including attempting to bend the front license plate back into shape. (laughs) Here's what happened. According to the complaint filed January 30th in New Haven Superior Court, Yop leased a WRX in April 2023 from a different dealership, and brought it to Dan Perkins Subaru in November 23 for his second oil change. Okay. He instructed the service advisor not to wash the car because he didn't want the ceramic coating damaged. Why would you put a ceramic coating on it if you... I don't don't want it washed. After the oil change, the technicians took the car for a spin, with the younger technician allegedly asking the older one, how long are we going to practice for five stalls? After the lesson, they went to an off-site car wash for the purpose of covering up the evidence, then returned to the store where the service manager told them the owner is going to effing kill us. (laughs) It was clean. He said not to wash it, the complaint said. Service manager asked the technicians if they had beat on it, and the technicians (laughs) admitted they had. He then informed the technicians they had effed the front plate, according to the complaint. Yeah, the, multiple, the brushes. Multiple employees then allegedly worked to hide evidence, including cleaning the interior and wiping down the car, the suit claims. When Yop got <laughs> home, he noticed the mangled front license plate, swirls in the ceramic coating, and paint imperfections. Oh, my. The WRX was delivered to Perkins in good condition and returned damage, the complaint said. Damage occurred as a consequence of the incompetence of the technicians. The suit seeks damages and attorney fees for violation of Connecticut's consumer protection law, as well as conversion, civil theft, negligence, and breach of bailment. Dan Perkins Subaru didn't respond to questions from Automotive News. Wow. They took it for a spin, yeah. and the older one tried to teach the younger one how to <laughs> use You know, you probably it's think that happens a- more often than you think. A test drive. Yeah. I mean, that's all it was. To see if there was anything, anything wrong. wrong with it. What's the problem there? I, I don't see anything. Don't you call those like uh, media pool cars? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in our case, the ones that Mars and I get are kind of beat up pretty bad. As a matter of fact, before you get them. Uh, yeah. I had an opportunity to drive the C8 Corvette. This was a couple of years ago when it came out. Twice. Why? Because the first one got wrecked before I got it. So into the shop it went. I didn't get the car. Mm. About nine, ten months later, I guess the car got out of the shop or they got another Corvette. Don, we got your Corvette schedule. Great. Did I get it? No. No. (laughs) Why? Because it got wrecked. Those Mm-mm-mm. influencers. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's those. I man. remember one of the Mustangs kind of got totaled that way. We've got I a remember, couple coming up. I, uh, re- I remember a uh, uh, a Dodge Viper. Oh, yeah. I remember that story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy's name was H.G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was his initials. <laughs> of course, it had no traction control. He no. spun it out, flipped it over in a ditch. And from what I understand, that Dodge had to take the car back to Auburn Hills and crush the car. Crush the car. Yikes. Well, that's why we that's why we don't get to have them now. We don't have nice things anymore. No, we don't. There's always somebody. <laughs> so that's that one uh, person. And if you don't know who that somebody is, it's probably you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Quick break now. We'll be right back. You're on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Thanks for joining us today. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest 
and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. It's the End Wheel Time Car Talk Show ahead. We are going to have with us today. You bet. The wrong sheet. I don't here. know. We world? can tell you who Welcome it is. Welcome to the award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk <laughs> Show. The Lilienthal's are back with yes. harrowing stories oh. from the Winter Alcan 5000, oh. and where they played placed among the complete. Spit where they it finished. Out, where they finished. <laughs> Spit it where out. they placed among their competitors. I had it written down right. I just screwed it up. I thought maybe Mike wrote it's it It's probably that donut that I'm all <laughs> wired been that up. Donut. Got the sugar, yeah. The sugar You'll donut. hear my thoughts on driving the new 2024 Lexus LX600 Luxo Mobile. <laughs> Pricing in particular is coming your way, and Mr. Mars has this week's events calendar just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Today's show sponsored by the Houston Meekum Auction starting next Thursday, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zeke and I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. And look who's back from their big trip up north. Andy and Mercedes Lilienthal. Yay. How y'all doing out there? Yeah. Oh, hello. Great to be here again. Yes. It, uh, well, it's good to have you. Uh, let me ask you this. How did it go to the Alcan 5000? I went really well. Um, we ended up actually winning our, our class. Whoa! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah but you uh, still got we your were... coats on, so you yeah, must have got really, really cold <laughs> up there. Sick and sick haven't thing. thawed out yet. We almost were going to wear our hats and our down parkas just because, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just because, yeah. Okay, so let's for those that, that don't know, let's explain to everybody what the Alcan 5000 rally is. Yeah, it's a 5,000 mile time speed distance rally, a road rally that starts just outside of uh, Seattle, Washington. And this year's route took us up to uh, Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories, cut over to Whitehorse in the Yukon, uh, took us up to Fairbanks. We drove all the way up to Coldfoot, which is halfway to Prudhoe Bay on the Arctic Ocean. Then that part was optional. Down to Valdez, uh, Alaska, and then finished in Anchorage uh, in time for the Iditarod. All in 10 days. My God. Wow. Did, was there any sleep to be had by anybody? <laughs> yeah, about that much. Yeah, I mean, so I will say this year we, we were mid-pack in terms of our number. So you start out on your number. So in other words, each morning, let's say the first car out's at 8 o'clock. So if you're car one, you're out at 8.01. Well, we were car 15, so we're out at 8.15. So we, we generally get in a little earlier than when we were car 39, say, in, in 2020. Right. And we might want to talk about what a time speed distance rally is or a TST rally is because people might think of stage rally. Yeah, it's, so it's basically an, uh, it's precision driving. It's accuracy. It's not how fast you get there. It's how accurately you get there. So like golf, <laughs> it's, a, it's a you want a score of zero. So if you're... If you go through a checkpoint early or late, you're penalized. 
So being accuracy in the driving, that means Mercedes did all the driving. I did all, <laughs> yeah. yeah. She did. Uh, listen, I was a driver. I did all the navigating. <laughs> Trust me, the navigator has all the work. The driver just, you know, steers and accelerates and brakes. So um, on ice and snow, though, so yeah. I mean, he had a challenging enough time as it was. Yeah, and and the the joke, of course, is that the you know the navigators always know where we're going, and the drivers all <laughs> at breakfast were like, "Where are we going?" I don't know. And the yeah, navigators all know. If this is my map, if you can kind of see, probably not because the screen, you never know. But there's this is my map. So um, we ran the, what is called the SOP class or the seat of pants class, which basically means we have a stock odometer. We are in this rally organization. We're allowed a GPS odometer. Um, I always went to the hundredth and that basically was it. And I had a, I had a child's calculator. It's like bright lime green. It's huge. <laughs> so if I'm bouncing around the road, I can just hit it and I'm not going to be accidentally hitting like a three if I wanted to hit a two or something like that. Um, and that's how I rolled. I didn't have any fancy computers or, or rally apps running while I was competing. So that's how we competed. And so when I told Andy left, he really needed to turn left because if it was in 0.28 miles, we really had to catch it. So it's a lot of a lot of things going on at the same time. What what kind of vehicle did you guys drive this in? We did it in a 2024 Ineos Grenadier. Uh, that's a brand new company and a brand new vehicle. How'd it do? It did really well. It did really well. Uh, the funny thing is we picked it up with like 87 miles on the odometer. We yeah. drove it to, to Seattle. So it had about 287 miles on the <laughs> odometer. And everyone was like, oh, how do you like it? I'm like, I'll let you know in 5,000 miles. So because <laughs> I we literally just got it. So it took some getting used to. I mean, like any vehicle would. Um, but Boy, it, it really proved its its worth on some of the really, really bad roads up there. It's full-time four-wheel drive, so it was great in the snow. We switched over to a uh, Michelin uh, XI snow tire, which did super well. Um, I even took third place in the ice racing competition with it. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, it did really well. And as far as the trim level, it was the Trial Master trim. So... Uh, for the Ineos Grenadier, there's three different levels uh, or three different trim packages. So there's the base level, the Field Master, and then the Trial Master. And the Trial Master is the most ruggedized, most off-road capable version of all of them. What's the MSRP for that? Just around eighty. Just starts, about eighty. USD. Starts at about eighty. Ours had some options on it, like uh, the the optional rock sliders, the rear ladder. Uh, a winch, a uh, roof rack, and a light bar, a couple other things. So ours was probably closer to eighty-five, eighty-eight thousand. 88,000. How many days does the uh, rally go? Uh, it goes 10, ten, ten days ten of, of days. competition. Two of those are uh, what they call sort of optional days where you can either go do something. It's called an extreme control uh, that will allow you not to be, not to have points added. So one of the days, for instance, you can go to uh, Coldfoot, Alaska, which is a 500-mile round trip. From Fairbanks. From Fairbanks. And then... Uh, to get fuel. To get fuel. <laughs> and see the Arctic Circle, which is, you know, we were probably one of the first grenadiers, if not the first grenadier, to get to the Arctic Circle. One of two. In uh, in, in the United States. So, um, and so, but yeah, it's it's 10 days. So, it's, it's intense. You have a competition in the morning and then up to a 650-mile drive day. And there might be another one at the end of the day. Wow. Right. And then the other extreme control was uh, we ended up doing both of them. We had ice racing, as Andy had alluded to, on the ice slums on Great Slave Lake of all places um, where that was held. And then in the afternoon, we did both optional extreme controls where one of them was an ice road uh, in, called Dutta Loop, which is just outside of Yellowknife to get back into Yellowknife. But then also a long haul road to get to the start of another ice road called the Ingram Trail, which God. that might sound familiar with some folks because the Ingram Trail is uh, where Ice Road Truckers is filmed. Yeah. So that was pretty neat. Well, we're, we're rolling the pictures that you sent Mike while you're talking. So those are very, very cool pictures. Um, yeah. how, how, many, how, many comp how many other vehicles were competing in the entire event? So there were 36 total teams that started the event. And of all 36 teams, Every single competitor and team finished this year, which is a huge feat in of itself, especially with it being a winter competition. That includes the front wheel drive Mini Cooper that was completely stock. Like that guy was a that guy was a champ. You know, yep. here's us in these big four wheel <laughs> drives with all this power and stuff. And this guy showed up in a Mini Cooper uh, Clubman 
And uh, and he finished. <laughs> God. Hats off to everybody. Yeah. And what insane asylum did he come from? <laughs> <laughs> repeat one because i think he took that mini um or another mini the last previous one or was it the summer or it winter? was the 2021 it was he, a, uh, yeah winter another winter one and that was we were told by the rally master that 2020 was one of the worst snow years ever and actually uh the, the gentleman in the mini cooper in 2020 uh had so much snow packed up in his uh sort of his transmission tunnel area if you will that he um he ended up getting, issues, yeah, it was the shift linkage. It was a manual transmission. Wow. It was so packed in there, he couldn't get out of a uh, certain gear. So he had to bring it into town and defrost it before it keep going. But you get all kinds. I mean, there was another one, a 73, uh, uh, 73 Capri. Capri with a 302 swapped in it, rally preps and all this stuff. And they won in, in 2020. And, uh, but they were back again for 2024. And, I think they uh, came in second or third. That was Russ and Garth. They're yeah. local to the Portland, the Pacific Northwest area. And, very experienced. Yeah, they're very experienced. Did you get any time in a hotel room? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Each, each night where we have accommodations at a, at a, at a hotel, motel, holiday inn or something. Holiday and, inn. And, uh, where were you sleeping? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was dreaming of a holiday inn, but <laughs> so, um, but yeah, some of the hotels are nicer than others. A lot of them have gotten better over the years, yes. um, so that's good. Uh, and again, being mid pack uh, and having a little bit more power, we're able to get in early enough to get dinner almost every single night, which is fantastic. Uh, not something that happened in in twenty twenty. So. Uh, well, uh, we might want to tell them what we were driving in 2020. Well, we were driving a, our Mitsubishi Pajero, which was very slow and you know didn't do much more than 65 miles an hour. The Ineos had plenty of power, and we could certainly cruise along nicely. And as he glosses over the fact that it was a Pajero, let me just rewind it for a couple seconds. A Pajero, ours is a 1991 Mitsubishi right-hand drive diesel Pajero, and it was in the Arctic in the winter when we competed in 2020. So that might be able to tell you a little bit about that and how slow it might be. And I think it was 100 horsepower when it was brand new in 91. So Yeah, we lost a drag race to a glacier and it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you guys get the Grenadier? How did you, I mean, did they come to you and say, hey, do this? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question. Um, so I actually talked to Inyo's right when they very first brought the hand-built number one prototype to, actually it was Houston a couple years ago. They trucked it, up, trucked it over, <laughs> they shipped it over, and I flew down there, met the team, the, the beginning of the team, and uh, at that time it was just a shell, literally a shell and a steering wheel and uh, some sort of a seat and a bunch of wires in, in, in the inside in a roll cage. Um, since then, I uh, kept in tune with the manufacturer I went over to France to off-road uh, some of their uh, PTO2 prototypes. Then I flew to Scotland. And um, again, as a journalist, I was writing a bunch of articles and on podcasts and things during this time. And last year, no, actually in 2020, yeah, 2023 in Scotland, I drove the uh, European diesel and petrol specs in Scotland off-road and on-road uh, for their global launch. Um, during that time, uh, I approached them, we approached them and said, hey, you know, you guys have they, they tout 1.1 million miles of severe duty testing. So we said, you know what? How about 10,000 or how about 5,000 more? How about 5,000 more miles in a competitive fashion in the new, in, in the new um, I'm sorry, but not the new world, but I mean, a North American Arctic. Um, and, and they said, yes. They say, yeah, and see what they say. Well, I mean, that, that doesn't surprise me. And, and considering y'all's experience and, and, journalism and and uh, prowess on the on the track and and off road i would say yeah let's get let's get the thing over there to these guys and let them do their thing so where is the card now uh it's currently at uh, ron tonkin gran turismo which is the inyos dealer in for the portland metro area and uh yeah it's a uh, it's on display on the showroom floor last we heard so um i hope I they didn't probably- wash it no. no. <laughs> so they actually asked us not to wash it because they're going to it's on it's on display where we may do a presentation for uh, some local uh, Ineos owners. Soon. And uh, they said, don't wash it. Don't wash it. So we even told the Alaska <laughs> folks at Alaska Auto Transport who they usually want the vehicle washed so they can see if there's any imperfections. So right. they don't get, you know, for and we, we damage, told them, yeah. like, we don't want to wash it. And they're like, that's fine. So, yeah, no, it's it's good and dirty. Yeah, they, they made exception for it. I mean, they took over 100 and some photos. Yeah. <laughs> so 
just because they're very careful with shipping. Sure. Yeah, it arrived with all three cracks in the windshield and everything. So, Well, that's understandable. I mean, with what you guys put that thing through, I, I can certainly understand that. Um, are, you, are you ready to make your personal appearance with the vehicle in the, in the dealership showroom? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. We are. We'll probably share, share some photos and some video and some stories of the road and, and just you know, talk about how, how well it did and how we didn't freeze to death, which I, is always good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know if he pulled any shenanigans like, hey, go check that tire, and as he's getting out, you drive off. Yeah. Anything <laughs> like that? Kind of. But, uh, <laughs> no, Andy just finished. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel um, via our automotive brand called Crankshaft Culture. And via Crankshaft Culture on YouTube, Andy just finished loading the last uh, short video short that we have. When we were competing um, as a navigator, I do have a little bit of time to create some social media content. So I was posting daily reels and daily updates that were pretty extensive on Instagram. And then I flooded out to all the different social channels on via Crankshaft Culture. So he posted all the day-by-day happenings video-wise. So if you are interested just to get a visual snapshot of all the videos, check them out on YouTube. They're quite entertaining. <laughs> what, do we, what do we look up? Crankshaft culture? Yes. Yeah, go to YouTube and just look up crankshaft culture. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I want to know, at the end of the event, did y'all have a, a big party? <laughs> sort of, yeah. We, um, yeah, it was, uh, so we finished in Anchorage, uh, stayed at the, um, the Hotel Captain Cook, which is a very nice establishment, Anchorage. Um, it was all valet parking, which nobody really knew, so there was no parking lot. So yeah. that was interesting, trying to offload all of our gear. Tons of um, gear. And there was, a, there was an award ceremony, um, and uh, it was at a very nice uh, part very of the nice. hotel. Yes. So uh, it was good to, uh, good to have taken, you know, t- gotten first place in our class of, uh, of 19, uh, 17 vehicles, uh, which, again, was the largest of the, of the classes because there were 36 total teams. Well, and to see everybody finally in one spot. You know, I think everybody was just so deliriously tired. Um, and, and But it was just fun. It was just fun to hang out and then just kind of go, oh, my God, we're finally done. Yeah, the, the camaraderie <laughs> is so so first class at this event. Uh, the unfortunate part is unfortunate part is there's just not enough time to really hang around with people. So, um, you know, at, at the end of the end of, end of the uh, event, you can a little bit and, and so on. But, uh, yeah. Man, it sounds like tons of fun. So have you got it lined up to do again next year? We have. Uh, we've already signed up. So they're doing it a little bit different every now and then. They kind of need a catch-up year. So uh, it's usually every two years, like kind of like the Olympics, and it alternates summer and winter. So they're actually going to do a 2025 uh, summer rally and then a 2026 summer rally to catch up, keep the schedule on check. So, uh, so there's going to be two summer rallies, and we already put our name in uh, for 2025. So, and who we partner with? Not stay, sure yet. Stay tuned. We don't know. So, hey, hey it may be the in wheel time team. You don't know. Yeah, yeah there there we go. Go. <laughs> Mike will help you drive. Yeah, and, <laughs> well, I, I will tell you this: that if if we joined you. You would not make it past the 200 mile mark. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. No. First stop at Bucky's and it's over with. Yeah, yeah. We we we, yeah, we, we carry too much gear. We'd weigh you down. If you think you got gear, you ought to see us when we move. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we do a remote broadcast, and then you got to stop and pee. So now, what what what's next for you guys uh, outside of the rally stuff? Are you actually still employed, Andy? Uh, well, uh, I, Mercedes and I have our own business, and we do uh, writing and marketing and, and PR, that kind of stuff, uh, for a whole host of uh, clients in the off-road and outdoor industries. So um, it keeps us we're busy. definitely definitely employed that way. Uh, lots, of, lots of busy things to do, including this weekend. But uh, what's next for us? Uh, we're actually, believe it or not, we're, we're flying to, uh, to Texas here uh, next week. Uh, going to be uh, out in East Texas uh, for uh, a little while during the eclipse. And then uh, we head up to uh, Wisconsin for a few days for a family visit. Uh, and then we're, uh, believe it or not, driving back from Wisconsin um, to Oregon. And then uh, we've got a few things going on this summer that uh, I think uh, you guys will be probably pretty interested in. But we're, we're sort of... We're sort of we sitting on that one right now. Uh, we got to tease them. Yes. I want to know about this Wisconsin connection. Oh, family. Who? Yeah, we have family in Wisconsin. Both so. of you? Yes. yes. Where? Uh, central Wisconsin. Hers, her mom Western. is in central Wisconsin, and my mom and uncle are in uh, western Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. How'll be? 
Don's, from, Don's from Wisconsin. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, cool. I, I, yeah, I'm from Wisconsin, too. Oh, okay. cool. Whereabouts? Uh, I'm right outside of Milwaukee, a little town called Waukesha. I oh, worked, yeah. I worked in Waukesha at Kalmbach <laughs> Publishing for over five years, my first job out of college. So. Well, my dad used to work for a Waukesha Motor Company. Oh, oh my cool, gosh. Yeah. What a small world. It is, isn't it? Well, so we, wow. we'll have to catch up sometime. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say that we would meet you for your uh, for your eclipse buzz but i'll 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 pass on that i i'm actually working that day but um i next time you're in texas we must get together for sure yeah we're gonna be on the eastern side this time yep well otherwise we would okay well very good well it's great to hear the stories we love it and uh, glad y'all made it back safely busy couple there and uh we love you guys and stay in touch with us appreciate ha- you having us on thanks thank a lot you, you so bet much. you thank you always you bet, bet. Crankshaft culture. Yep. There's some well, fantastic pictures they had. And yeah, yeah. Mercedes yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah, no doubt. All right, we're going to take a quick break. In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24 7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our three hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and In Wheel Time.com and podcasts from your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. Welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Time now for this hour's car review. I got to drive the 2023 Lexus LX600. Why 23, Don? Well... They're a little behind in getting the 24 mm-hmm. models into the press fleet. So there, not much has changed. So it comes in these trim levels, the LX, which is the base, the premium, the F-Sport handling, and luxury. I had the F-Sport handling. What size, class, standard SUV, body on frame. Think of a Tundra pickup truck underneath this thing. So, obviously, it's quite stout. It's very off-roadable in the luxury kind of style. Yeah. Seats, including the driver, three rows, up to seven seats. Uh, exterior changes from last model year was all new in 2022. Exterior features include a big, boxy, upright, stoic, luxury body on frame suv oversized lexus grille with modern squinty headlights high up on the front fascia 
fixed side steps between the large wheel openings. Rear hatch lighting reminds of Lincoln SUVs. Sorry, Lexus. But I like the overall conservative uh, high-brow design. Hmm. We could use improvement. Um, the busy lower rear valance panel. I had to find something, so I was a little bit taken aback by that. Interior highlights, big, roomy, well-laid-out interior. Large landscape-style infotainment screen above a well-defined center stack. Changeable instrument cluster. In other words, you can change the layout of that in the instrument cluster. Cargo and trunk room, well, big with the third row seating down. What I liked about it, the high comfort level. What could use improvement? Some confusing nomenclatures that they use on some of the control buttons. This has a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine that turns out 409 horsepower, wow. 479 pound-feet of torque through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Tow rating up to 8,000 pounds, so you can get your Chris Craft behind it and take mm-hmm. it to the mm-hmm. uh, take it to the beach. Yep. Uh, manufacturers miles per gallon, 17 in the city, 80, uh, 17 in the city. 22 highway for combined to 19. I got 18 miles per gallon over 512 miles. What I liked about it, the power and the towing capacity. What could use improvement? Well, fuel economy. But, you know, when you're buying at this level, does it really matter? Uh, the 10 speed does clunk at times, depending on where you are and how you're using the actual accelerator pedal and the brake. I'm a two footer and. Um, I'll tell you that it does cause confusion among some of the vehicles that I drive. Hmm. Uh, it weighs in at four tons. It's heavy feeling. And uh, cornering feels a little top-heavy as well. Ride and handling, but I like the adaptive air ride suspension. What could use improvement? Well, at speed, the rear end gets hiked up like a cat in heat. Yep. Uh, the cruise gap distance resets to maximum after each start. That hmm. kind of bugged me because I use the uh, cruise control. Yeah. Okay, pricing. Base trim price, $102,025. Price is tested, $108,460. The base model price of this vehicle, $90,815. You want to ride, don't you? Yeah, we, I was in it. <laughs> yeah. you, we, we went for riding. Did we go for yeah, ride? Yeah, we did. It was where did I take you? Where, where did we go? What was our event? It was something good. Yeah. Oh, we went to Galveston. It was we so did. good. Y'all forgot. Yeah, we went to the... Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I remember you wrote it center. down there because we were putting stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, it, was, it was a great vehicle. Uh, overall, I really did like it. Competitors include the Cadillac Escalade, or as I like to call it, the Escalade, Escalade. $81,895. The Lincoln Navigator, it starts at $82,765. And the Jeep Wagoneer Series 3, which is the top of the line, $81,630. Wow. And that is my review of the 2023 Lexus LX600. Like it or not, I liked it. It was a good truck, yeah. yeah. I call it a truck because it's big. Well, it is, and it's a body on frame. And you know, it's funny because we used to be used to that body on frame. You don't find too many of those left anymore. No, there's not. Uh, it, it's, everything is a crossover, which is basically uh, unibody construction, generally speaking, from a car. And using the frame of the Tundra, that is stout to begin with. Correct. All right. If you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. We're back after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. 
headed east to Louisiana, stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It too's on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invite you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. This is the world's favorite place to go for podcasting and live streaming. It's the In Real Time Car Talk Show. Ahead, NHRA Hall of Famer inductee, Coleman Roddy. Mars has this week in auto history and the events calendar. We'll get you caught up on the stories making automotive news headlines this week. Today's program sponsored by Meekum Auctions Houston, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Howdy, along with Mike, out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. We let David Ainsley, our chief engineer, sleep in. (laughs) I hope he heard that. I hope he did, too. Because that means that he's not sleeping in. (laughs) Oh, he'd be all over the comment section. Yeah, soon. He's probably not even home yet. Did he go somewhere? I'm assuming. He's a young guy. The young guys do that. No, he's younger than us. He's not young. Oh, yeah, he is. He's just younger than us, that's all. Mm. Mmm. Mmm. That's David Mmm <laughs> Ainsley. All right. Joining us now, um, after 40 years after retiring, he got inducted into the National Hot Rod Association's NHRA Hall of Fame. And here he is, Hall of Famer himself, Coleman Roddy. Coleman, how you doing? Great. How y'all doing, gentlemen? Well, we're doing fine. You kind of aged yourself. Uh, by telling us all of that and the fact that uh, you did uh, comp- competition eliminator uh, titles in 83 and 84, again, telling us kind of how old you are. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty well says it all. Yeah, that, exactly. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your career uh, in NHRA drag racing. Uh, uh, when did you get started? When, what what possessed you to get into drag racing? It was definitely my father, Ed Roddy. He um, he raced in the early and mid fifties. He retired in nineteen fifty seven, um, racing a forty Ford with an Olds engine in it that set the uh, national record in August of fifty seven. Right before he retired, it ran thirteen flat at a hundred and one and a half miles an hour, which was Kind of crazy, unheard of in 1957. My and, my uh, my my 23 year old Corvette runs a 13 flat. That's the best that it'll do, and it, you know it's relatively stock. So that means a lot from 1957 and that car running that fast. He basically, um, I don't know, it just uh, genetically rubbed off on me, and then uh, in my mid teens maybe 16 or 17 unfortunately i was uh uh basically started off as a street racer which is where uh, i I met you there you go uh 68 camaro and uh i got beat by everybody early on and then finally learned how to do it with help from uh uh a lot of locals and the first guy i met when i went to houston was uh Luther and Tommy Costales at Houston Engine Balancing, and and they basically gave me some tips. The car got uh, toward the end of my street racing career got really really fast. Uh, I think the best it ran was 998. So I kind of I don't know, just kind of got too fast. So really couldn't get anybody to race me anymore. And then that's when me and Dad decided to uh, turn 
quote unquote pro in 1976, uh, trading our 427s in for basically 280, 287 cubic inch small block shibbies. Well, that era, it would have been the what the 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 302 kind of uh, uh, setup from Chevrolet that uh, that they put in the Z28. Uh, eventually, uh, when I first started, basically it was a small bore motor. Uh, it wasn't the big bore motor like we ended up running the Z28 style motor. Yeah. Uh, the 287s had a little longer stroke and a little shorter. I mean, a little longer stroke and a little bit smaller bore. Uh, so you couldn't run as big of valves in them, and they weren't nearly as efficient. Later on in my career, when uh, me and David Nickens teamed up, and I started winning and running really fast, uh, we used the 302 block 30 over, and basically destroked the three-inch crankshaft down to 2700. If you can imagine that, it ran a 2700 stroke. Um, so those motors, even back then, you know, we'd cross the finish line at about 9,900 RPMs. 9,900 <laughs> RPMs. Uh, really humming. Yeah, I was going to say Same. screaming is more Sewing like machine, it. Yeah. I, I, I see a picture here of you standing behind your uh, Camaro. The, I guess it was your street Camaro at the time. It had a, a big scoop on the hood. That's a cool-looking uh, car. Sit, sitting on top of the carburetors, I assume. And... Um, is that the same car that you ran uh, with all of the graphics on the side of it later on? Absolutely. It is uh, the same was, car. Yes, that was my real, um, I would consider first real race car. And then we modified it uh, several times. We ran gas with it with a fiberglass front end. And then eventually we went to F modified with David Nickens Power, set the record, and was semi-successful with it. We we won, uh, I think, three races with it, uh, but then graduated into the 65 Carvette, which was a, and the Firebird, which were much, much better race cars. Why were they better race cars? Uh, the Camaro had a 108-inch wheelbase. Uh, of course, the the... The 63 through 67 Carvettes all had 98-inch wheelbase, and they were, you know, the engine set back, everything. They were one of the most efficient race cars ever in modified and competition eliminator. And, you know, mine was no exception. It it uh, it did everything right. The only, the only knock I ever had on the Carvette was the fact that when you put the wheel tub in it in order to put the big tire in it, a guy six three and a half like me, I basically had to shift the car four times uh, in the quarter with my knees kind of up in my chest. I never had enough room to stretch out and be comfortable in the car. Hmm. Well, and that was the Corvette. What, what a, did you say that you uh, also had a, a Firebird? The Firebird was my most. Uh, it was the Firebird was was a famous famous car. Uh, it was built by John Harrison. It was his brainchild. That car had a 101-inch wheelbase. Uh, it had enough room inside for me to stretch out. I was very comfortable in the car. We ran modified production with that car, and it was the first of its kind. Uh, John came up with all of these. Uh, it was the prototype for all the cars that basically imitated it afterwards. Uh, we were the we were the uh, Betty and Roger Lamb did the struts on this car. Uh, it would take me an hour to describe how he got away with running a coil over shop in the back of a um, car that wasn't supposed to have one because he designed this ingenious setup that uh, had the shock and the and the coil spring all in one spot, but it actually was not a call over shock you could take the shock out and the car would still stand and that's how we got oh. away with it wow. and this car believe it or not the record not the index but the record was 942 first weekend out when we won the winter nationals we went 933 
And then two weeks later in good air at Green Valley, it went 915 at 147. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Whatever became of those cars of yours? Well, um, the Corvette, I ended up selling to Eli Lopez in, in the Dallas area. And it's a really cool story. Uh, I got a call from them or a text from them in 22 that they had something that they wanted me to have. Well, the car, the Corvette had been gone many, many, many decades ago, but it had two hoods. And the one hood that I ran on the car had been in their loft for 20, uh, well, for 40 years. And there it is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they presented hey, you with the hood. They presented me with the hood. It is absolutely the same. If you can see this right here, this is from 1983 when I won the world championship. This is the hood, and this is my prized possession. It is absolutely a time capsule of what went down uh, in 1983. That is so cool. I know that you're proud to have that. Um, what do you What do you do these days? What do you are you Are you working? No, I retired uh, May 27th of 22. But if you can see in the shop, I know your main sponsor is Meekum Auto Auction. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is a 87 El Camino that I am bringing to Meekum next week. Oh. So I give them a little plug. It's going to Meekum. Uh, so I, instead of working on fast cars, I have a 69 all original uh, 68,000 mile SSRS Camaro. There it is right there that nice. we've been working on for years. Yeah. And then there is uh, an 010 Carvette that I've had for 10 or 12 years. Got a blower on it. Uh, the guys at Sam Tech in Houston, Judd Mazengill and his bunch uh, helped me with it. Uh, I took it to the track in Baytown. It ran 1060, so it's, it's not a slug, but... Um, I just go watch the races now and uh, talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. This is uh, very impressive. Where do you live now? Um, we live in we live in Port Natchez. My little tiny shop here is uh, in Nederland, right behind me and my dad's dealership that we had. We were uh, fortunate enough. Uh, dad was fortunate enough to be in business for 65 years. I helped him for 51 years. You see all these little blue ribbons everywhere. These little blue ribbons were uh, were where we won uh, best used car dealer of the year for I don't know twenty or twenty two years. But he passed away in twenty two, and it was never going to be the same. So I decided to retire. Well, oh. well, tribute to Dad. Yeah. I mean, you know that's uh, that's quite a story and, and very impressive racing career as well. Um, do you attend any races anymore? Not in, in competition, just to go watch. I do. Um, I, I go every chance I can. I did want to mention one thing before uh, before time gets away from us. This little wall right here is basically a culmination of my racing career. Uh, now, we are in the Museum of the Gulf Coast here in Port Arthur, and uh, but... The thing, I, I raced a long time, but I was not very good. Uh, when Vic Custer, John Harrison, and David Nickens helped me, the last two years we raced, when we won the world championship, we won nine races, and we were runner-up three times in two years. And then the last year, which I don't have it here, it's in the museum, we were able to outpoint all the other world champions, me and my team, uh, to win the Quaker State Sportsman Cup, which was the greatest honor as a quote-unquote sportsman racer that we could achieve. So that's when I retired. Uh, hmm. We retired after that year when we won the Sportsman Cup. And I don't know if you all know anything about the Museum of the Gulf Coast, but it is a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, here in 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 i actually grew up in port arthur and if you know anybody down here if you get time because they've got jimmy johnson and 
you know, Janis Joplin and all these people and in there. But and, and, and Mike Mars. And Mike Mars. <laughs> yeah, the Mike Mars music. Mike Mars has been through there, but he's not in there. No, go see Coleman and a bunch of people. You're in it in my book. There you go. <laughs> well, this is, it, it, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you, and we thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, the Museum of the Gulf Coast. I assume yep. that uh, we could find that online. You can, you can, and you'd be surprised to, to see some of the names of the people that are in there. I, I would be. Yeah, I would be. Very cool. Well, Coleman, we'll hope to see you uh, one of these days soon in person. Yes, sir. All right. Well, we look forward to it. And again, thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. Well, we. Uh, it was my pleasure and honor to do it, and uh, y'all keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you, my <laughs> Thank friend. Thank you, sir. Talk Take to care. You, soon. you bet. That, 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 what a fun interview. Yeah, he still makes it out. The, the the needle and drag still runs like on a third Saturday or something. It's not nothing like it was when we were growing up. But he still gets out there every once in a while. You'll see him on the side of the road. Yeah, as we said, yeah, watches it. Part yeah. of the part of the festivities. The well, we're not done with you yet. Now we have the events calendar, Mr. Mars. What what the are events the what calendar. events do you have, sir? Uh, I have lots of events. I lots can see that you, you need you need to have a file. <laughs> I put it under He's the bottom. Assistant. That's uh, the wrong thing. <laughs> How about this one? The events calendar coming up Yay. today. Today, March the 30th, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. You can still catch part of the Space City Cruisers Spring Car Show yep. down in League City. Spectators are free. Come out and check it out at SpaceCityCruisers.com. Next week is the big Meekum Auto Auction here in Houston, NRG, yes. April 4th through mm-hmm. 6th. One day ticket is thirty. Multi day is seventy five. This is one. Even if you're not a buyer, this is a great car show to go see. The auction is a is a big show to see as well. I've got some makeup dot com for more information. And coming up April thirteenth, Space City Corvettes Club twentieth annual Corvettes and Crawfish. Drive your Corvette out and get some crawfish. Gates open at eight thirty. Awards are at three. Pre registers forty five. Day of the show is fifty. This is at Stevenson Park. 1100 South Friendswood Drive in Friendswood. Go to SpaceCityCorvetteClub.com for more info. Then coming up, the big hot rod tour of Texas, Yeehaw. April the 25th through the 28th. Victoria, Texas kickoff for three days of cruising through Texas. Uh, then um, the next weekend, May 4th and 5th, Keels and Wheels at the Lakewood Yacht Club down in Seabrook. Keels-Wheels.com for more info. And then June 7th through 9th, 49th. Lone Star Street Rod Association State Run in Granbury. Go to lssra.org for more information for the events. Thank you. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts, yeah, you can get them from your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues after this. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge and Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle 
help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mika Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. Thank you for joining us. You're on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. And um, time now for Mr. Mars' feature event, Auto History. Back to back. I got to load it. Go ahead. <laughs> this week, in 1968, Lincoln introduced the Continental Mark III. Now, a focus group actually provided feedback that this was negative, and they didn't particularly care for it, but Lee Iacocca and Henry Ford II loved it, overruled the group, put it in their production. But it did not carry any Ford or Lincoln badging. It hmm. was Continental. It was the only badges on it. I'd drive it. Yeah, I would, too, with a 460 cubic inch engine under the hood, luxury interiors, including leather seating. Also this week... 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona breaks the 200 mile per hour on track. Buddy Baker went to the Alabama International Speedway after Chrysler got a hold of him to test the ongoing Daytona program for the Dodge. 30 laps, he recorded a lap speed of 200.096. Later in the day, he actually popped that up to 200.447, became the first person to officially do 200 mile per hour on a closed track. Hmm. Also this week, in 2005, the Saturn Sky debuts. Uh, it came out in, with the press release. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people said it was going to be great. Shared a platform with the Pontiac Soltis and the Opel GT, which should have been a tail sale sign. But even with the several power options under the hood, they only sold 34,415 units. And the Saturn band was completely discontinued in 2010. Taking the Soltis with it. I remember the Sky with it. I remember the car... Very well. I liked the car. The problem was, like all of the cars that GM made in that era, it was underpowered. It had it would had it was gutless. It was terrible. Yes, I yep. think there's one on display down on the uh, I-45. What's the uh, Buick GMC dealer down there? We just passed Gay Pontiac. I think that there's one down there in their show. It used to be Gay Pontiac. Yeah. Now it's Gay Kia or something. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Gay family, Don Gay and Donnie Gay. Donnie Gay was a drag racer yep, yep. that uh, damn near burned to death in a, a terrible fire in a, in a funny car. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, a lot of history back there. Matter of fact, uh, we drove past it, and I said, right there is where the drag strip used to yeah. be at the Walmart. Walmart. Mm -hmm. Yep. Had a, a, one, a friend that built a front-engine dragster back in our days, back when we were still just coming out of Why high school. Why do you say it like that? <laughs> because I wanted you to realize that there are people that are almost as old as you are. But he took it over Who to... Who are they? <laughs> You're such an ass. <laughs> well, he took it over there, and Don Garland's, at, Darn Garland's actually signed his license once he made the passes that he was supposed to. Hmm. Uh, I never drove the car. I, I, I helped him do the burnouts out in front of well, the house. I'm, I'm, that's good, because we know that you can't back up. Well, it's, there's no reverse in it. And your license is signed by Sergeant Wooden. Wooden. Woodard. 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 Yep. He was on TV last week. He was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was. He was talking about... He's going to try and see if he can join us next week to talk about driving with the Eclipse. He was talking about four-wheelers. Yes. And all the crazy yeah, the, stuff the, that goes yeah, on with them. The, the takeovers yeah. and stuff. It, it's uh, it's yeah. crazy. You know, if back in our day, we wouldn't have done that on the street. Oh, we no. would have, we'd have done it in some parking lot somewhere that there wasn't anybody. Well, you wouldn't have done it because you'd have known it was not. Well, we didn't have the vehicles to begin with. Yeah, and you had a there was a different mindset. <clears throat> growing I think, up. think the worst we did was uh, get to a parking lot at, like at Gateway or something. We take the four wheel drive trucks and we had time together to see who could tow the other one. <laughs> You know, and, but I mean, we didn't tear up anything. We didn't mess up any traffic unless people stopped to watch. You Have know? you been ticked off at all this morning? Uh, a little bit here and there. Have you? Yeah. You want to get really mad? Hmm. Not particularly. You're going to. Ford CEO Jim Farley's total compensation. Farley, Farley, Farley. Jumped twenty six percent last year oh, wow. to twenty six million four hundred seventy thousand and thirty three dollars, despite falling short of his potential bonus target, according to the company's annual proxy statement. Compensation for four 
of Ford's top five named executives rose from the prior year, largely because of revamped stock awards that estimate the hypothetical value of future payouts, according to a spokesperson. UAW President Sean Fain, an outspoken critic of what he views as excessive management compensation, blasted Farley's pay package. Quote, just a few weeks ago, Farley was crying to the press about how the UAW's record contracts are forcing the company to rethink where they build their vehicles. But now they have no problem finding the money to give him a 26% pay raise to $26.5 million a year, Fain said. Mm-mm-mm. Let's be clear. This is corporate greed, plain and simple. Now, if I keep reading, it's going to do more than more than already. make you bad. Well, Farley's UAW compensation that trailed that of Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares, which jumped fifty six percent last year <laughs> to roughly forty million dollars. General Motors has not yet released CEO Mary Barra's compensation, although she received nearly $29 million in 2022. The mm-hmm. automaker will hold its annual virtual shareholders meeting May 9th, according to the filing. Virtual because nobody wants to be in a crowd of angry people, yeah. as you can imagine. Mike, I need a raise. Yeah, well... Uh- By the way, speaking of, uh, speaking of Mr. Mr. Sean Fain, UAW membership fell... 3.3% last year to 370,239. It's lowest mark since 2009, according to the annual financial report filed by the union. Following prolonged work stoppages at Ford, GM, and Stellantis last fall, the UAW paid out $152 million in strike benefits, more than triple the previous reporting period. Strike-related costs last year also included $27,295 for rain ponchos for strikers and $37,350 for yard signs related to the Detroit Three Strike, according to the filing. The union reported net assets of $1.1 billion and almost $4 million in liabilities at the end of the reporting period. What would Jimmy Hoffa do? That's what they need to base everything on. Well, first of all, you got to find him. Well, no, just his ideas and his theories and the way he went about running the UAW. What would he do? I don't uh, think he'd have that guy in charge. No, I don't think so either. No. Swimming with the fishies. Well, it's been an interesting show, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Yes, it has. And uh, so, uh, and I'm really glad we got the chance to talk to Coleman. I've been trying to. We've been trying to juggle schedules for quite some time. Are you, all, are you also glad that uh, I made you mad at the end of the show? <laughs> well, I, 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 the twitch is about gone now, so I'm getting over it. <laughs> the twitch. But, Have a donut. Yeah, the eye and twitch some brown is water. Gone. Yeah, you know, but but they always talk in total compensation. You know, I, I learned a long time ago that some of that is is built into their contract for, you know, uh, performance incentives type things. You know, you know? what? Now, I'm so, not saying they're the right, but it's not. They're not saying this is what the guy's salary is. What you can get away with, Mars. It's, it's kind of like a senator. You know, the salary is 175 thousand dollars, but they're worth 50 million dollars. So yeah. you know, there's extra. We do know, and it still ticks me off. That I think that's way too much money for anybody. Mm-hmm. What unless, do you do course, with that? unless you formed and made the company. Well, it, you're, you're, it, it should be based on performance. You know, what are you contributing to the company? Yeah, you're contributing on uh, sucking out all the money of a, a company. That's that's what that get a big pile and roll around in it. Hey, we've got to take a quick break. Follow We're going to wrap up today's show right <laughs> after this. Stay with us. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? 
Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Well, that's it for this week's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. This is your invitation to follow us on Facebook. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and share our stuff if you would. We'll keep you posted on all things automotive all week long, including interviews, new car reviews, upcoming events, cruise-ins, racing, manufacture, and car, truck, and SUV news. When you're looking for award-winning talk, you can find the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show 24-7 via the iHeartRadio app. Daily 30-minute podcasts available from your favorite streaming provider. We post a new episode every day. And don't forget, we live stream this show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWillTime.com every Saturday, 8 to 11 a.m. Central Time. The InWillTime Marketing and Video Technical Director is We Always Need More Jeff Zekin. For booking agent, video editor, posting personality, and mother overseer, Mike Mars. And Chief Engineer, David Ainsley. I'm Don Armstrong. We hope you'll join us next week for another live, award-winning production of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show next Saturday, April 6th already, 8 to 11, on all of our In Wheel Time Car Talk outlets. Have a great Easter weekend, and be safe out there.